It is episode number 82, and me and Chip are joined by the sensational Andrew Tate. How are you? I'm doing pretty good, but both of you have vodka in your glasses, and I'm kind of jealous. Well, it's, it's right there, right in front of you. Unfortunately, today you have to pour it yourself, you know, there's no one there to do it for you. But yeah, vodka and uh, Red Bull straight, 10 a.m. Yeah, this is... You is said, this... look, you're my guest, Andrew. Come on the show. You're our guest. I have to pour my own drink. <laughs> story, story of my life. Oh, straight vodka. Oh, this... That oh, is oh, setting the pace. Is not, you're embarrassing us on our own show. I know. It's just to start, my oh, friend. Andrew, I want to ask you, if I think everybody wants to know this. How does a day in the life of Andrew look? 9 a.m., 8 a.m., 7 a.m., what time are you up? That's a good question. It varies, but I, I think I get up quite early. I wake up early, but not on purpose. I struggle to sleep in general. I, I, I struggle to sleep because the world is open for conquest Yep. and I am full of anger. Oh. And, and when I say full of anger, I don't mean that in a negative way, right? People think of angry in a negative light. I don't see anger as a negative thing. I think anger is extremely motivating. So even though I have absolutely everything I've ever wanted and my life is fantastic, I would describe myself as angry a lot of the time. Not in a negative, unhappy way, in a very excited, positive way. So if I wake up to go piss at 5.44 a.m., then I'm up now. Yeah, that's I'm pissed it. off. I'm up now. <laughs> I'm up. No. Way. How many? How many supercars do I have? Twenty-seven. It's a joke. Pathetic. Should be at least a hundred by 100%. now. So would you say a hundred supercars is where you say, all right, now, now, this is the point in which there is no point, my friend. That's what you don't understand. <laughs> no stuff. There is no point. It never ends. There is no top of the mountain. When you get to the top of the mountain, there's another mountain that must be climbed. There's no such thing as a point. I mean, maybe for, if you're a brokey, there's a point where you can get to in your life where you feel some kind of contentment. Like, I'm a brokey. I'm now a little bit less than a brokey. I'm happy. That's not yeah. who I Brokey and wagey, those are, are those the same at the moment? Was, cause I no, you can, no, no. You can, be, you can be a brokey without being a wagey. Yeah? Yeah. Well, yeah, because you might just have no job at all. That's right. Or you can have, <laughs> yeah, a, or have a business that ain't making any money, right? Yeah. So, um... Yeah, I, I, I'm extremely motivated. I'm motivated by anger, and I don't say that in a negative light. I want people to understand I'm an extremely happy person, but I'm happy and angry. So for that reason, is usually the second I'm half awake, like if I'm sleeping and one of the bitches either way, like bumps me, you know? You know those Yes. Yeah. You're, yeah, sleep, yeah. you're oh. sleeping between the two chicks. Of course. course. You know, and it's too hot because the cover, and they're, too, and they're all like trying to hug you and shit. You know what I mean? When you're on the 165th floor. 100%. And, you, and, and you've got that Andrew, I feel on. like you're a man that's on the 165th floor. I, I don't understand this don't, meme. I don't know what this means. But, no, this isn't a meme, my friend. It's uh, 165th floor. It's the, an executive uh, place for people like myself and you. Uh, you know, the tallest building in the world is 164 floors. We're one floor above that. Yeah. I like that. Yeah, nobody else it's, is here. It's a place that, you all know. Right, yeah. All right, I live on the 165th there's a, there's floor. A separate, yeah, welcome, there's a separate elevator. Welcome to the 165th yeah. floor. Thank you, no, absolutely. Thank you. No, absolutely. So I'm on the 165th floor. <laughs> bitch here, bitch here. One of them bumps me. Uh -huh. uh, I'm half awake. Oh, now I'm furious. I check my phone. 10,000 notifications. Million dollars. Need to piss. Go piss. Now I'm awake. You know, and now you're awake and you have to attack life. So I'm usually up pretty early. What's the what's worst way to start your morning? Breakfast. <laughs> Yeah. What like, I'm actually like with you having to eat it or like just the idea of breakfast? I think that breakfast is the worst thing that's ever happened to humanity ever. <laughs> Why? It's it's terrible. <laughs> You're gonna wake up and just eat a bunch of food you didn't you haven't had to do any work, you haven't had to hunt for that food, kill that food, you haven't made any money, you've done nothing of conquest. Nothing conquest orientated since you've woken up and you're just going to sit there and stuff your face. So you have to earn your meals. I think so. I think it's undeserved. I think when people wake up and the first thing they do is, is put food in their mouths, I think it's a bad mental model to approach today with. I think you should wake up and you should stay hungry. You should stay hungry for a long time. Why not? We ain't going to die. You can go weeks without food. You yeah. should wake up and you should stay hungry for hours and hours and hours you, until you've made some money or done something of note or been to the gym or progressed in some way. So you think I deserve some You food. deserve this. That's my alarm. To breakfast wake up. time? You know, you know the breakfast time. Breakfast That's time. a cereal alarm. Because slackers like me were meant to wake up for an 11 a.m. podcast. That turned out we to get be a text saying Andrew Tate's arriving one hour early. Bro, I've been up since I've been up since five thirty this morning. Five thirty. Have you had I breakfast? I went to bed. I went to bed at two. I, I struggle to yeah. sleep. I really struggle to sleep. It, it's actually amazing to me, and I'll say this because I think the number one thing that plagues humanity nowadays, especially amongst young men, is laziness. A lot of people come to me and say, "How do I become successful?" And I say, "You're lazy." And they say, "I'm not lazy. You are fucking lazy." Everybody is monumentally lazy. Nobody understands what genuine work ethic and ethos is. And for me, it's hard to understand because I struggle to not work. I struggle to sleep. I struggle to relax. I can't sit and watch Netflix. I can't sit and play video games. I can't do the dumb shit everyone does. All I can do is conquer Earth. 
I can't even turn my brain off long enough to become unconscious. So it's very difficult for me to understand people who sit there and go, yeah, I want to be successful, but I can't find the motivation. Do, do, you, do, you, not, do you not at points think I, it would be nice to, to just chill out for a day? What would be nice about that? Just the, the, the fact that you, you, don't, you could just do nothing for a day. Does that not seem appealing to you at any, at any level? No. What Why would the, it, what's appealing about doing when nothing? When was the last time you took a day off? When was the last time you took a day off? Well, I'll take a day off, but I'll certainly not do nothing. Maybe I'll take a day off and I'll go driving a supercar through the mountains or something. But that's yeah, still, but that's still no, very active. Yeah. It's still very like, oh shit, we're about to die 300 miles an hour. It's very yeah. active. There's no sit, oh, I just want to do nothing. If I am ever in those kind of scenarios, then I'm glued to my phone and I'm making money. I, I, I can't imagine sitting and being happy doing nothing. I can't find solace in that. It's not what I want. I like, I like a calm... I, I apologize. I like a stormy ocean. I don't want calm. I like big waves and chaos. Shit going on. Yes. Shit happening. I want, I want a chaotic life. I want four businesses and eight girlfriends yeah. and my phone ringing and, and problems and stress and this chick's crying and that chick found about the other chick. And I, I need all this chaos because so, that's where I find enjoyment. Right. With the girlfriends, you say you have eight or however, however many at the time. How many do you have right now? Can we, can, we, can we get a rough figure? I don't know I should be saying this. Because the, the, I'm a man of God. Ah, uh, you, you free speech. You say what you want. All right. I'm a man of God. So one, of course. Of course. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. No, but um, and do they know about, do they know the situation? Let me ask you a question. Do you have a girlfriend? Yes. Are I you do. loyal to your girlfriend? Yes. Do you want to be? Yes. Why? Because I, I enjoy, I like coming home. I see a family. I, 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 that's the main thing for me. I want kids. I yep. want to raise kids. He's, I wanna, he's, so, he's, so, he's so, a and I, and I see. No, it's all a sin. No. no, I understand it. I understand. Carry on. I'm listening. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm listening. I, I, and I feel like the best way to have that family is by being loyal to one person. Okay. If you could have a woman at home who loved you and adored you and was loyal to you and wanted to have a family with you, but you could also have one other chick on the side without problems, would you do it? Without if you're no. honest, if you're honest to your true biological instinct and you forget the social societal program, no, I, I get what would, you mean. What would you do it? Because I think every single man alive, if they were truly honest to their biological programming, would say, "I want more than one female. I may not want the headache. I may, I may not want to lose my current female. But if I could keep my current one, and she'd be loyal to me, and she understood, and we had a family, and everything was cool, and I had this bitch, then I'd do it. I think every single man who's honest with themselves would do it. So Next what's, so what's stopping? What's stopping a, a woman from? having that same idea as you buckle up do you have a seatbelt? <laughs> yeah put it yeah on. it's on put it on i'm fast actually let me take off my jacket it, 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 this one this firstly like for any female who's listening to this podcast i apologize to you in advance i'm apologizing to you for the horrible thing that's just been said because even the idea and the notion that a female should be sleeping with more than one man at a time is disgusting <laughs> so the fact <laughs> so the fact that he is trying to pollute the minds of the youth and i'm sitting here on the same panel <laughs> Absolutely disgusting. You're degrading society. Please don't say those things ever again. It's haram. It's outrageous, Cal. It's haram. <laughs> it's, haram. it's haram. It's outrageous. It's haram. And, and the reason why a female can't do those things is, is actually threefold. The first reason is she doesn't want to. Any female who's actually a good woman, who's not been completely corrupted and destroyed by society, doesn't want to be sleeping with a lot of men. They don't want to. Why would they want to, right? Any woman who says, I want to sleep with loads of dudes is broken. And she's broken on a fundamental level. Stay far away. The second reason is paternity. You have to look at humanity from two aspects. You can look at us from a societal perspective in regards to the society we've built and the rules we've taught each other. And we can also look at us from an anim animalistic perspective, what we are and what we've evolved as. The only way you know that baby is yours, pre-science, is was virginity originally. But basically the fact you're the only one fucking her. How else, you, how else are you going to ensure paternity? The difference between a man having a bunch of chicks and a chick having a bunch of men is if the chick gets pregnant, no one's going to know who the fucking dad is. It's weird. <laughs> it's weird if i'm fucking five chicks we all know who the dad is big daddy takes the dad <laughs> fine we know who the mom is we know who the dad is now we can have a big happy family but if you got one chick getting fucked by five dudes nobody even knows who the dad is and just because modern science can fix that problem doesn't mean it's not wrong right lana rhodes wrong. had that exact that exact thing a lot recently. of what sorry lana rhodes did she yeah well nobody could figure out who the dad was that's what i mean it's just she's... disgusting it's horrible. So, and, 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 and the last thing is any female who comes along and starts saying, well, if you can do that, I can do that. It's horrible. So, and, 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 and the last thing is any female who comes along and starts saying, well, if you can do that, I can do that. 
she has a very warped view of society because she doesn't understand the fundamental differences between men and women. And a lot of women do this when it suits them. They try and pretend that men and women are not the same. Uh, so, uh, uh, I, I misspoke. A lot of women try and pretend that men and women are the same. When it suits them, they'll sit there and go, no, well, if you can do it, I can do it. But that's not how the world works, right? If someone breaks into the house, the man has to go defend the woman. Like the, we, we have gender roles and we have a different view of society. We act differently. Men do certain things. Women do certain things. That's the way society functions. It's always functioned. The modern world's trying to convince us that's not true. Females will pretend it's not true until it doesn't suit them. Oh, if you get to sleep with a bunch of people, I get to sleep to, with a bunch of people. Till the Titanic's sinking, then she's a chick, right? Until there's a war, then she's a chick. Oh, I'm just a girl. You go fight. <laughs> it's bollocks. It's bullshit. I understand that. I I, that. I, yeah, I get that. Man. Yeah, it's no, bullshit. No, no, and, and since the dawn of human time, every single king, every single sultan, every single emperor, every single one of them had more than one chick. All of them. That's all they did. Because once you get to a certain level of status as a man, there's one of the things you get to enjoy are the spoils of war. And the spoils of war are usually females. And there, it, so why, what's the reason right now, me and Cal, we only have one female. Because you've decided. Is, have we not, have we you, not hit that level yet? Well, you've decided to be constrained. And you've decided to be constrained by societal rules. And you've also decided to be constrained by the emotion of the female you're with. That's not necessarily a bad thing. You sat there and said, I don't want to upset the girl I'm with. Yeah. So I'm going to allow her to control what I do with my dick. That's fine. But if you're a man like me, you don't allow those kind of things. You don't allow female emotion to control you. You are limiting, and I'll be serious with you guys now, right? And I'm not looking down on you. I'm just making it clear to the decision yeah, you made. Yeah. You. you are limiting your own bloodline purely because a female will get upset. With your money and influence, you could have 15 sons. You could have an empire. You could be Genghis Khan, but you won't. But because I don't, you won't. I don't, I don't you won't know because, if I want 15 people texting me. Well, this is what I mean. Yeah, you, that's <laughs> chaos. Well, I love chaos. But the problem is you won't do it. The main and primary reason you won't do that is because you don't want the chick you're with to get upset. Yeah. So you're allowing the female who you're with and her, and her tears to control and limit your own biological bloodline. If you were truly yeah. about it, like Genghis Khan, you'd be like, fuck you. Kid, how do, how kid, do, how do kid, we break kid, free? Kid, kid, big boss, I'm a G, Spotify deal, look at me. Yes, I can't be stopped. he knows. But, that, but, the, but this is it, right? So it's all down to how much value you want to put on the emotion of others and whether you're going to allow that to influence your behavior and your thinking. And I'm not saying you have to be a complete psychopath or a sociopath, right? If you have a chick and you love her, you don't want her to cry. I have women I love. I don't want them to cry either. But still, there's a point where it goes, look, I don't want you to cry. I'm going to take care of you. I love you very much. We'll go to the Maldives, but I'm the big G and I'll be back later. So it is what it is. Would you ever see yourself with, with one person at some point in your life? Or, or like having, having that, yeah, one person, whether that be the, do you see yourself having kids with different women or just one? God has a plan and I follow the divine inspiration which comes from the Lord above. If he wants me to have 10 sons with 10 different big booty cuties, then that's his plan. What can I do? I'm just a vessel of the Lord. I am here to, to enact his will. My, my point is, is not necessarily about even just having kids. My point yeah. is that if a man is totally honest with his biological programming, he doesn't just want one woman. He wants a woman to be loyal to him. Men, we absolutely value female loyalty. We need women to be loyal to us. We can't stand the idea of a female cheating. But what we do is, in modern society, what most men do, if they're honest with themselves, I know there's going to be a bunch of hate, a bunch of idiots, a bunch of chicks saying, hey, this is a misogyny, a bunch of girls who are already DM'd me trying to pretend they don't want me. <laughs> <laughs> bunch, of, bunch of dudes, uh, every time, a bunch of dudes going, well, I, am, I love my chick so much. Like, shut up, pussy. <laughs> so it, but the truth is this. If a man is completely honest with himself, the reason, yeah. he, the reason he complies with a lot of the societal expectations is not because he wants to. It's because he doesn't want his woman to cheat. If I don't cheat, she won't cheat. He has no problem cheating. He just doesn't want her to cheat. You understand? Yeah. And, there, and there, does get to, there does get a level in life that you do reach, there is an echelon of success you reach where the whole idea of exclusivity is thrown out the window. If a chick meets Chris Brown in the club, do you think she's like, wow, he'll be loyal? That's Fuck no. She doesn't funny. care. She doesn't give a shit. She's like, give me a baby, please. She doesn't give a fuck. So women also, if you get to a certain status, they will perceive you as an as a individual which they can't tame. And they will not be talking about loyalty the same way they'll talk to other men about loyalty. And a lot of that is, once again, down to who you are as a person, et cetera. If I get with a woman, she's going to be with me and she's going to love me with all her heart. And she's like, look, I know you're doing whatever you do. Just please don't let me find out. She ain't stupid. 
Chain dumb. So what I do is out of respect, I come on a podcast and tell everybody. <laughs> <laughs> so the most most women that you meet now, do they know that you're Andrew Tate, the man that you are now? Most, most women that you meet now, do they know that you're Andrew Tate, the man that you are now? Do they know about the fame that you've just recently acquired? Because it's just my fame isn't recent, up. right? I've been underground for a long time. You've right? yeah, yeah, been around, market, my friend. No, no, no. But you've hit a new market, of, market yeah, recently. You, you that's hit, for sure. You've come in, and you know you've got all the youth now that are on your side. Pastor Tate, Cobra Tate, terrific Tate, <laughs> terrific Tate. I've, I've my, I'll have my own Tate TikTok account at this point. Do it, bro. Yeah. <laughs> no. So you've 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 hit this new market. Do all the women that you meet at the moment know about this? Yes. Yeah. All the boys. They all send me the TikToks. You're a cheater. And send me the TikTok. I'm like, no, baby, no. Have, have you, have you, have you been... It's just TikTok, baby. Don't, <laughs> don't get upset over TikTok. Come here. It's just TikTok, <laughs> baby. <laughs> well, what's this I found in your room? Oh, that's, that's just TikTok, baby. I was watching. I was TikTok wa panty. I was watching your house tour the other day. Yeah. yeah, it's a nice house. You know what? You know what threw me off a little bit? You got the pool, but it's red, uh, like on the inside, yeah. not the classic. What? Yeah, what? It's red. Why, why, why is that? It, it looks red, like, it looks that, like that a, you've got you, you made fuck. you made your pool look like a fucking car, like the way it's red on the inside. <laughs> yeah, like I swear I to God, I've never, I've never I've never seen that before. I wanted purple, and then my brother wanted red, and then we flipped a coin, and he won. So now it's red. Blue's boring, right? Your blue is blue is standard. Blue's a bit, isn't it's it? a bit done, yeah. and and you know we have. Six or seven houses in Romania, yep. and they're all different colors. We but you guys one. live at this the one that I watched with the red pool. Is, is that, that the main, main gaff? Room. That's the main. That's the main mansion. Yeah. Yeah. Well, why do you? Can I ask? Why do you choose to live there? In Romania? Yeah, I know you. I know you have like businesses and things going on there, but but why there? Because Western society is degraded, and Western society is more corrupt. How do I say this in a way that it's not going to get it taken off Spotify? All right. Oh, it, no, okay. Oh, Spotify. Spotify, Spotify we, listen, not, we, we had a woman get a tits. Yeah, she got a yeah, tits. Spotify, cool. Spotify yeah. worked for us. Don't All worry right. about uh, it. Gangster. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, then. Put your seatbelt back on. No, but I think the Western. I think the Western world. There's something that I very, that very much angers me about the Western world. I don't feel comfortable here. I don't like the way it functions and operates. I think it's the most corrupt, disgusting, degraded societies on earth. There's nothing left besides money and corporate agenda. And I like living in countries where one, there's some kind of moral fiber beyond the dollar. And two, I like living in countries where corruption is accessible for everybody. So in Romania, where I happen to live, it's the most Christian country on earth. There's churches everywhere. People see a higher power beyond simply just money and government. They, they believe in God. That's another reason I like spending time in Dubai. It doesn't matter if it's Allah or God or whatever you want to call him. I like that. And also I like Eastern Europe as a whole because corruption is far more accessible. I find it offensive that a police officer in England will stop me for speeding and then refuse to take a bribe and pretend that, that no, 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 but I'll tell you why. Cause he'll sit there and go, no, this is the law, law and order and pretend that the law means something and, and fuck me over. But if you're a billionaire or if you're Boris Johnson, you can go to Epstein's Island. You can fucking throw parties during COVID. You can do whatever the fuck you want, right? So the whole, the whole idea of law and order is a lie. The whole idea of it's bullshit. It's just about if you're high enough, you can throw it all away. I'd rather be in a society where if I'm in Prague and they stop me for speeding and they say, bro, you were speeding. Oh, here's 50 bucks. All right, cool, cool. Bye, bye. If corruption exists, which it does, let us all play. Why do only they get to play and I don't get to play? So you live in England and they're going to come around and spout law and order at you all day long. But the elites, they ignore all law and order. It's yeah. always been bullshit. It's always been lies. So they're going to sit here and lock you in your house or force you to wear a mask while they get to do whatever the fuck they want. And I don't like being anyone's peon or anyone's sheep. So I like living in a society where my money and my influence and my power means I'm not below or beholden to any of these bullshit laws because mm -hmm. laws are laws and the whole idea of law the whole idea of justice the whole idea of fair oh, you got me started now all of it all <laughs> of it no, 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 let's go. Going, We're gonna go. all of it is a fucking lie i don't think most people living in society now actually understand that every single thing every single institution which is designed to protect you is corrupt all of them they're all corrupt and they're all evil. When's the last time the police prevented anyone getting hurt? They might come afterwards. They might take a crime report, maybe. But they care about making sure your mask is on. They care about fucking making sure you don't drive too fast. They won't do anything else about the knife crime in London. No, sir. They're too busy fucking around with dumb shit. All of these organizations designed to, to protect you are just corrupt and they're out to just keep you a slave inside of the matrix. All of it. And, and I don't like living in a country where those institutions are strong enough to have a genuine impact on my life. I don't like that. So you feel more freedom out in Romania than you do in any of those other places? I feel, I feel more freedom in a lot of countries. Yeah. If you live in a country, and it's not even just Romania, right? Thailand. You live in Thailand. As long as you don't hurt anybody, nobody gives a fuck. Nobody gives a shit what you say. Nobody gives a shit what you really do. Nobody cares. Yeah. In England, you, you, they'll watch your social media. They'll watch where you go. 
They'll want to make sure your taxes pay. All this bullshit. They're on top of everything, right? And they're doing it all. And what do they offer you in return? They can't offer you your safety. You're not even safe anymore. Mm -hmm. Like if you're going to live in a police state, I spent a lot of time in Dubai. Dubai is a police state, but I love Dubai. Mm -hmm. Like if you're going to live in a police state, I spent a lot of time in Dubai. Dubai is a police state, but I love Dubai. If the government are going to watch everything I do and, and offer me safety to wear a million dollar watch to walk down the street in the middle of the night, yeah. I'll take that. London can't give me that. No, yeah. sir. They can't give me nothing. So what are, they, what are they offering in return? They're offering absolutely nothing in return. They're just trying to keep you all slaves, peons inside of a system. And the system is designed to oppress. It's deliberately designed to oppress from the, from the bottom up. A, a lot of people don't seem to understand if you're living a semi-normal life, you are living inside of a system which is designed to destroy you. The educational system is designed to destroy you. The financial system is designed to destroy you. All of it. Even from the very first second you go to school, that is the beginning of the indoctrination, which, which is designed to keep you a slave inside of the system paying tax until you die. So to the, to the, to the average person, what would, you say, what would you say to the average person right now? Let's say they're watching it. They're working their nine to five and, 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 and they've listened to what you said and they go, fuck, like, yeah, I, I resonate with that. I, I hear what you're saying. But they go, well, what the fuck else am I supposed to do? How do they like, this, is, this is literally, yeah, this yeah. is literally How do they get what, out what I'm, what's the first know? step? Yeah. Breaking free. Yeah, that's, and that's, no, so, no, 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 it's how, do you, yeah. how do you break free? Yeah. It's a good question. The first thing you need to do is identify it because when I say this, a lot of people try and pretend it isn't true. If, if, if you watch the movie, The Matrix, I really think it's like a prophecy to some degree. If the latest watch, one stinks so much. I, like, I haven't even watched it because yeah, I know they'll ruin it. Don't. Like they ruin everything else. Yeah. But if you watch the first one, he says it, the people who are dependent on the system will fight and defend the system. So mm -hmm. if, you're, if you're still dependent, if you still believe in these things, you're never going to break free. It, it's actually a miracle if you think about it, it's a miracle that let's look at the educational system, that the educational system functions. They have convinced people to spend 50, 60, 70, 100,000 pounds to go to university, get in debt, to learn business from a dude who's never had a business with no money. <laughs> the fuck? What the fuck are you doing? <laughs> like, have you lost your mind? It's bullshit. And everyone knows it's bullshit. And they've done it because they've managed to get the educational system to operate inside of a vacuum. They've managed to link the loan with the educational system so it's vacuum. It's a vacuum and it can't be compared fairly to any other service. So if you look at a candy bar, right? That candy bar has to be competitive on price because you can buy any candy bar. But when it comes to education, you can only access the money if you go to university. You can't compare that money if you were to invest it in cryptocurrency or start your own business or invest it in some kind of particular training for some particular trade or whatever, right? Yeah. You could only go university with that money, which devalues the money and devalues the education. If you, if you were to take 50 grand, if you were to give everybody 50 grand and say, you can do whatever you want with this 50 grand, you can buy Bitcoin, for example. No one's you can, going to do that. Yeah, yeah. Who's going to Nobody's choose uni? Yeah. They can't compete. They yeah. can't compete in an open marketplace, right? So they operate inside of a vacuum and then they convince people to go to these schools. They get you in debt early because that's what they want. Now you have to get a job. You have to get nine to five. You have to keep paying it off. So the first thing you need to do is you understand that the whole system's rigged and you've been fucked from the beginning. That's the first thing. And the second that's thing- a, you, That's a tough one to swallow. <laughs> like no, it is. It, it is. No, but but it, it, it is. It's but it's started. absolutely- I get it. it. Yeah. I get what you're saying. It's, it's true, right? And, and, and even, even, this, even things as simple, like I'll go far deep down the rabbit hole, right? Because I, I got a few uh, requests to do podcasts with some big millionaire property guys. Yeah. And I'm not a property guy. I don't like property. And they said, why are you not big on property? It's the easiest way to build wealth and blah, blah, this shit. And I said, listen, you still believe you're still inside the matrix when you own a house because you believe in ownership. I don't believe you in house ownership because I don't mm. believe you own anything. I was going to ask you about that. I'm currently applying for a mortgage. Correct. Okay. What are your thoughts on mortgages? Would you say I'm part of the, uh, the system? Am I trapped in? You're, you're completely trapped. And, and with a mortgage, it's even worse. But let's assume you could buy the house cash, right? You buy the house cash. You now own a house. You have a piece of paper that says you own a house. Have you ever pissed? I, I guarantee... If you piss the government off, you will not own that house anymore. If, you, if they decide we need another lockdown and you go out of your house during lockdown and you get a fine, 100 pounds, and you don't pay it because you think that you're a sovereign individual and you're a full-grown man and you should be allowed to go outside when you want because you're a free individual, right? You refuse to pay that. They put it up to 300 pounds. You don't pay it. They get a bailiff. Bailiff company adds two grand. You don't pay it. So now you owe five grand, whatever. You still don't pay. As long as you ignore that fine, sooner or later, they're going to come. And what are they going to take from you? My home. Your house. Yeah. So you don't own it. They tell you you own it. And you'll sit there and you'll tell everyone else you own it. But the second you annoy the government, a judge will stamp a different piece of paper. And now you don't own it anymore. 
Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the whole thing is an illusion. The idea of property ownership is an illusion. The idea of land ownership is an illusion. The idea of business ownership is an illusion. It's all an illusion. And, and they fool everyone because it keeps you inside the matrix working your ass off, right? If I, well, once my mortgage is paid off in 19 years, I'm going to be rich. No, you're fucking not. One. And two, now you have to comply with laws. You have a mortgage to pay. You have a job. You need to make sure the bills are paid. You don't want to lose the house. You have a family. You have to sit there. And when they say put a mask on, even though you know it's bullshit, you have to do it. It's part of the system they use to enslave. And when they say put a mask on, even though you know it's bullshit, you have to do it. It's part of the system they use to enslave. So when you look at the world the way I look at it, even things all the way down to property ownership are a scam. All of these things are a scam because you don't actually truly own anything. And then what you try and do is you try and build a life like I have where you're actually beyond the influence of governments and it's fucking hard. The law's a scam. They just decide as they go. They fucking make it up. It's all bullshit. A judge will stamp any piece of paper they tell him to fucking stamp. It doesn't mean anything. I feel like I'm going to go away from this podcast today. I'm fucking different, man. Bro. <laughs> Where's got no, your it's bro? But it's true. <laughs> Bro's casting a smell over to right now. Sat, I'm just like, He's transcending. Just opening. But it's <laughs> true. <laughs> because because they, use, they use this idea of law and judges and courts to try and legitimize their fucking thievery. And they sit here and they go, oh, but a judge decided. Do you feel happier if a judge decides to take your house? Who gives a fuck? You still lose your house. Who's this judge? Some jackass? Who, who, when did he decide? Who gives a shit? Who, told, who, was, who whispered in his ear and said, you know what, this guy, I listened to his podcast. He's misogynist. Fuck him. Take How do we get around this? How the fuck this, do you know? How do, you get around, well, how do we get around this? You're <clears throat> saying it's different. You, yeah. You're trying to live the life where you do av it's avoid no, it, it's, but it's, it's difficult. It's very doable. And, and the reason I'm saying all this, to answer your original question, because I'm a professional and I've not forgotten. This is for the guy. <laughs> I'm a professional. The guy, the, for the guy in the nine to five who's trying to escape. You're not going to escape if you don't understand the landscape, right? You can't win the chess game unless you understand the chess mm -hmm. board. So first you have to truly understand the world you're living in. Because a lot of people inside the nine to five don't realize how fucked they are. You have to actually truly understand it. So I have for a long time been building a life that <clears throat> has been aimed towards sovereignty. I have also a network called The War Room, which is aimed towards sovereignty. We can talk about a little bit later. But the idea of living off grid nowadays is, isn't real. You can't, you can't be go the to the woods with a tent. That's bullshit. You can't live that way, right? Okay. And it's the, also a pretty shit way to live, by the way. It's a pretty shit way to live, yeah. The only way you can truly put yourself beyond governmental controls is to be on as many grids as possible. So what will happen is when you speak to truly elite people is they'll have 10 passports, 10 different countries. Yeah, I they'll have, talk about this. Yeah, they'll have shell companies. So they'll own nothing themselves. I don't own anything. There's a yeah. company in the Caribbean islands that owns a boat that I can use because I'm a shareholder in X company. It's very kind of them to lend you that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know yeah, what I mean? So <laughs> really, if you're really not, nice, fucking use that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Do, you, do you reckon they lend it out to any other people as well? Afraid we'll, not. We'll put yeah. in a request. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I mean, I mean, I'm. Uh, have, you, have you seen a TikTok? I declare myself as Chip Tate now. No, no, hundred percent. Yeah, I, I did the, listen. The when I bring up the adoption papers, I expect you to sign them, a doc. Bro, I'm ready to get them out right now. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, why do I feel if I actually want someone with adoption papers? It, it and Andrew it signed this. I swear, it's building an army. It's building an army. But my point is that the, the elites of the world, once you stop thinking of the world in money, which rich people do quite quickly, like I'm not even that that rich. Thank you. Like I don't know, hundred million. Is that rich? rich yeah, I saw but, something saying that you were, what was it? We spoke about this last night. Uh, have you heard about this on TikTok? Deca millionaire. That's a millionaire. Yeah, that's, is that's, 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 that's Is it Deca or Deca? I'm not even sure, but that's, yeah. like, that's 10, right? Deca is Where 10. are we at? But Where are we at? Are, are we you, in the hundreds? Yeah. Are we in the tens? I'd say around hundred million dollars. Yeah. So is but that a centi-millionaire or something there? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Can I, it is, it, here's, a good, here's a good one for you. I Andrew. like that. Yeah. Andrew, so you said you're around hundred million. So we've yet to reach that billionaire status. When do you reckon we're going to get to there? Me or you? No, you. you. Uh, but by the way, you don't remember. Who will be there? Where will my son now? I, you, <laughs> <laughs> I fucking wait for this moment for a long, long time. You can take the boat. Time, you can take the boat. Listen, you know, listen, the listen boat. I love my father. You know, he was a taxi driver, but you know, sorry. <laughs> no, um, the, the, but money loses all value even after 10 million. Like the only reason you keep working is for, for influence. People who have no money think that rich people want to get rich to buy things, but that's not true. What we want to get rich for is to have influence over, over other people. We're all looking for power. The difference between a billionaire and a millionaire isn't what they can buy, it's power. It's power and it's influence and it's lobbying governments and it's controlling things. Do you think billionaires are worried about the fucking vaccine mandate? Fuck no, they're billionaires. 
Bro, like even me with millions, right? During all these lockdowns, I just got private jets. Get the jet. Boom. Yeah, did you, yeah. Did you, did you have to worry? I, yeah. I, I wasn't on Wizz Air so like a didn't, dickhead. You didn't have to uh, <laughs> worry about yeah. any of the... Shout out Wizz Air, man. Shout out Wizz Air with the, minimum age, with the minimum wage fucking air hostess running her mouth trying to tell me what to do. Like, fuck you, bitch. <laughs> Where are you from? <laughs> some, <laughs> some tiny town in Serbia? Now you're something? Fuck off. When, when was the last time you flew commercial? You know what? I used to actually fly commercial just before Corona because I was still semi-sensible with my money. Because if I want to fly, let's say, London to Bucharest on Wizz Air, it's 100 euro, right? If I take my jet, it's, let's say, 40 grand. So it's like 100 euro, 40 grand. It's a big difference. It's three hours. Like, who gives a shit? Yeah. So I was still, like, jumping on the low-cost airlines. But then when Corona came, they tried to tell me what to do, and I can't tolerate that as a man, like, trying to tell me where to fucking put my own face and shit. It's like, fuck you. So the jet got fully fueled. And that was yeah. It. So three years I haven't been on a commercial. I still, if I fly across the Atlantic, I'll take first class maybe. Yeah, because yeah. I was going to say like. Yeah, but otherwise that's, that's it's, a it's private. Uh, do you own your own jet? So you need to have an ego. And the ego can either be your best friend or your enemy. An ego you work hard to justify is a superpower. An ego that you have without justification is here to hinder you. So I'll give you an example of me, right? I've always had an ego. But I realized that I was full of shit having an ego if I wasn't actually a capable fighter who was rich as fuck with a dangerous world-class network. I realized that having an ego without those things was just bollocks. So I had 87 professional fights and I made $100 million and I, made, and I built the war room and got one of the most powerful networks on the planet. And now I get to have my ego justified and I get to sit here on podcasts and talk with confidence because I've justified my ego. I knew what I wanted to be and I justified it, right? If you have an ego and go, well, I don't have those things, but I don't need those things, to, then you're fucked, right? So most people are arrogant. I will sit here and tell the world on this podcast that I have a school called Hustlers University that mm -hmm. teaches people how to make money online with 18 modern wealth creation methods. It's $49 a month. And there are people who still won't join. Oh, he's full of shit. I have a jet and a boat. 27 supercars. No, no, no. 15 not you. Uh, no, uh, I know people who shell have. Company. Yes. Shell yeah, company. Shell company. 15, 15 mansions, etc. And they're going to sit there, listen to all of the things we've said, and go, mm, maybe he's lying. Because they are arrogant idiots. They're idiots, right? If Mike Tyson teaches you how to, comes and says, I'm going to show you how to throw a punch. Do you sit there and go, well, you know what, Mike? It's not bad, but I wouldn't do it that way. Or would you sit and go, okay, Mike Tyson. Right? So I've always been a very good student. Everything I've learned, I've learned from people. Even when I was a kickboxing world champion, I became world champion because I just blindly obeyed. It wasn't a matter of, I think this. It was just turn up at the gym, do this. My coach, who was Bosnian Special Forces, he fought in the Yugoslav conflict, would say, you're doing this today. You ain't going home until I've seen 10,000 push-ups. Seven hours later, I did 10,000 push-ups. That was the game. That was it. You just, I just obeyed, right? So most people are so arrogant, even if someone like me wastes their time trying to tell them how to escape slavery, they're too arrogant to even fucking listen. They're going to sit there and go, well, $49, maybe it's a scam. Oh, maybe I scam you out of a Nando's. Oh, no. <laughs> Boo fucking who? And, and if you want to, because I want to extrapolate our conversation, I want to tie back to things I said previously. We talked about how education exists in a vacuum. My education doesn't exist in a vacuum. Hustle University is in compet competition with every single other purchase on the planet. So I currently have 64,000 students. 64,000 people are inside of Hustle University paying $49 a month every single month. Don't be impressed I got 64,000 people. Be impressed I retain 64,000 people. Mm. Those people are making more than they spend. So you have to understand this. My educational system, it doesn't exist in the same way that traditional educational system does. You can spend that $49 on anything you want. I'm in competition with Nando's. I'm in competition with video games. I'm in competition with fucking food, fucking Snickers, the gym, porn, whatever you want to spend your money on. And 64,000 people have decided that the best possible value they can find for their $49 is inside of my school. That shows my school works. My question, you to, you, my question to you is, you mentioned that there were, what, 14, 18 ways of like modern- 18 modern, modern wealth creation way. methods, yeah, correct. Are any of those ways- uh, you, methods that you've personally used every single one of them are methods that i currently use that you currently use correct so they are taught by my it's taught by myself and other war room professors yeah and uh they're all ways that i currently use because there's some people who already go oh I'll buy bitcoin that'll make me rich no well what's it gonna do double 
Oh, your 1,000 pounds is 2,000 pounds. Congratulations, jackass. That ain't going to make you rich, right? So we, we teach 18 modern wealth creation methods. And TikTok's an example, right? TikTok is completely Hustlers University students making millions and millions mm. of pounds every single fucking month. All they needed is a phone. Everyone has a phone and time. Do you have a phone and some time? Yes. Are you a lazy jackass? No. Okay, then you can be rich. You can have a Ferrari. What the fuck are you waiting for? And when I say arrogant, because there are people going to listen to this podcast, listen to everything I've said and go, yeah, that makes sense, but might be a scam and not join. So most of you are either lazy or arrogant. Some people are so arrogant, you couldn't help them if you fucking tried. And the last is stupid. And this is the smallest category, right? I don't think you need to be smart to make money. I really don't think you need to be that intelligent to make money. I think less than 5% of the population is too stupid to make money. Do you know how TikTok works? Are you too stupid to upload a TikTok video? No, then you can make money. Are you too stupid to upload a YouTube video? No, then you can make money. Are you too stupid to, even if you can't do it yourself, to go on Fiverr and get someone to edit a video that you can put on your channel? Mm -hmm. like, like, no one's too stupid to make money. They're just too lazy and too arrogant. So that is the plague. So if you're working your nine to five, you need to look in the mirror. I'm gonna take off my sunglasses for this. You need to look in the mirror. Ah, look, yourself in, look yourself in the eyes. Look deep in your own eyes and work out which one you truly are. Am I fucking stupid? Smart work or intelligent work is something that most people use to hide and disguise their laziness. And I'll tell you why. Because if you're not a lazy individual, the first thing you do is you dedicate your entire life to work. Like I just said, every bitch I fuck is work. Every gym session I go to is work. Every car I drive is work. I'll film it. I'll use it. Whatever it is. Every single thing I do inside of my existence is work. Once I've used all of my human time, every single waking second of every single day, and, all, and, and I now have a pile of work I can no longer complete, then I look to streamline. And then I go, okay, I've been awake for 17 hours and my work isn't finished. I need to find a more efficient way to get my work done. That's yeah. when you start being smart and efficient. But until all of your time is used, Smart and efficient is a disguise for laziness. It's bollocks, right? Fuck that off. You don't need to be smart or efficient. You need to fucking work. I have people inside of Hustlers University. You just said I conquered TikTok, right? Mm -hmm. There's a guy inside of Hustlers University who is 16 and he's making 45,000 pounds a month. Do you know why? Because he takes my old interviews, he makes TikToks and he puts them on TikTok. He does 300 TikToks a day. He just fucking works. Doesn't think, doesn't try and be smart, doesn't try and be efficient, doesn't try and change the world. He sits his ass there on his phone and fucking works. And now he's making 45 grand a month. That's why I'm starting my Tate TikTok tonight. And I'm 100%. <laughs> and, and I've got my name. I've got my Chip, name. You ready. ain't even made a fella's TikTok. 100%. 100%. 100%. The fuck are you I doing am, right I'm go, now? I'm going with past the Tate. Don't make him the fucking money. No, make us the no, fucking no. money. No, listen. My affiliate link is going in my bio. <laughs> Guys, make sure. Past the Tate. Past the Tate. That's me right now. Tonight. <laughs> so, it, uh, but, 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 but this is the point. So most people are lazy. And when I say this, I understand work life balance. So I understand some people want to rest, blah, blah, blah. I get that shit. But there are people like me who are born to work. We're born to conquer and you have to compete against us and you're going to lose. You're going to lose because we have networks. We have people who work for me. I have a thousand people who work for me and all I do is work and all they do is work. All we do is fucking work. How are you going to beat me on TikTok? You can't, you can't beat me. I'm here and I've conquered the fucking platform. It's mine. That's because I'm a workhorse. So most people are lazy. So if you're going to sit there and you're going to look at me and you're looking at my 27 supercars and go, I'd really like that. If you'd really like that, you need to understand that every waking second you need to be working. And, 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 and I'm going to handle every excuse because I want to answer this question yeah. compendiously. Uh, Concise, drop, fantastic vocabulary. Right there, fantastic. Concisely. Word Concisely. Because most people who come to me and say, oh, I'd love to be rich. No, you wouldn't. Because if you'd love to be rich, you'd be working. Now the people say, well, I don't know what to work on. That's another lie. And the reason that's a lie is because there's always more work to do. Now, how much you care about something is directly correlated to how much work you find to do. Mm -hmm. If you truly love a coin, you can polish it forever. Right? You can find work to do. If you sit there and go, all oh, my work's done, then you haven't tried to find work. You can always find work. I don't give a shit if you're a carpenter. I'm a carpenter and I finish my work. Then go drop leaflets about carpentry. Oh, I don't want to do that. I want to stay home. Then you don't want to be rich. There you go. There's your fucking answer. So there, you can find work to do in any sphere. You're saying we can't do 10 podcasts in a row. Perhaps you're right. Let's assume you're right. Let's assume you can only do one podcast. Yeah. Yeah. I guarantee if I was in charge, whew, you guys would be fucked. If I was in charge of this business, let's say I was in charge of the fellas podcast, you would yeah. not be going home till at least 9 p.m. and I would find shit no, to but, fucking do. Okay, but I you would be doing something. In fact, there would so. be work to do. In fact, so when we finish this podcast, isn't the end of the work is not done. We'll go home and then we'll work on our own channels. 
Our, our own stuff. So right? when I'm done so, here, Andrew, so is, when it, I go, see you, yeah. see you at the top. Uh, no, 164 floor. Floor, my friend. <laughs> 164 floor. I'll see you there. And, and, and I'm not talking about you guys personally in a disrespectful way. I'm just trying to highlight the fact that there's always more work to do. There's no, no such thing. There's no Andrew, such thing as finish. I want to be disrespected today. I want you to tell <laughs> That's me. That's like some cock Andrew, fetish. I, no, <laughs> mother, no, no, seriously. No one's degrading. Andrew, right, I'll, tell you, I'll tell you. I'll tell you. Compared to the general public, they will look at me and go, Chip's rich. But then I look at you, Andrew, and I go, That's rich. Yeah, and I correct. want you to tell me why I'm not where you're at. I, I'm, so I'm I, I, you. That's what okay, I need. Good. I want to hear that. And I'm telling you. I want to. And I want to be on that fucking yacht. All right, I'll tell you. Yeah, I good. Be, yeah, I'm, he's, I'm, I'm, I want to be there. Good. Oh, I'm, good. So tell me everything. Good. Right. So, I need to know. Good. And this is the thing. So you you have to find more work to do. Now, if you truly can't find more work to do, I don't believe that's a thing. I believe that's just an excuse for laziness, right? You can always find some more work to do. You guys could go back to a podcast you made a year ago. And you could go and you could make a highlight show of all the times that you said, I don't know, fuck or drink or whatever. Yeah. And you could make a highlight video. You can make a 10 second video of all the times you said it. You could put some music on it. Boom, boom, TikTok. You could always find work to do. There's no you such hit, thing as no that work. Cow, that's your next <laughs> There's no job. such <laughs> thing as no work. No such thing. So most people are lazy, yeah. right? The second thing that the people suffer from is arrogance. And the reason people are arrogant is because every single individual, especially men, were born with a natural, we have an ego. Right? And I think the ego is a very important thing. If you read any of the modern bullshit that is pumped out by the matrix, they say, you must get rid of your ego. You must remove your ego. But I disagree with that. Absolutely. That's the matrix trying to program us all to be slaves. If someone has an ego, they are full of pride. And if you're full of pride, you do a good job. If you are proud of yourself, if you're proud of your body, you're going to have a good body. If you're proud of your work, you're going to do good work. If you're proud of the things you say, you're going to make sure the things you say are intellectual and well thought through, right? So they try and tell you to have no ego to remove your pride so that you'll accept the programming from the matrix. They want to make sure that you're an empty vessel. They can just insert their programming. So you need to have an ego. And the ego can either be your best friend or your enemy. Am I fucking stupid? Well, I don't think I'm stupid. No, I'm not stupid because everything Andrew said made sense. Okay, I'm not stupid. Am I lazy? I guess a little bit. Uh, am I arrogant? Work out which one it is and fucking fix it. Blink and cure your brain. And once you're no longer lazy or arrogant, they just have to find someone to learn from, right? You have to go, okay, I'm not lazy. I'm not arrogant. I want someone who's really willing to teach me. A lot of people on the internet were full of shit. I ain't full of shit. Congratulations. Job done. You're about to be rich and get yourself a Lamborghini. Tag me on Instagram when you get it. I might even share it. Get you some pussy. Boom. <laughs> Job done. What the fuck you waiting for? Let's go. There's money everywhere. If it's was, fucking easy. <laughs> Andrew, if I was to buy a car right now and I had a million dollar budget, what car would you tell me to buy? <clears throat> uh, what, what's what's the go to? What's the right? Is, do I just go what's for a right Lamborghini? Way? Do I go for a Ferrari? What would you tell me to buy? I want to know. That's a good question. Because you're shopping tonight. No, because I'm taking notes. <laughs> oh, I'm a Chip Tate now. So chip this was, yeah, Chip Tate. Bro, it was Pasta Tate <laughs> a second Stop, no. ago. Uh, yeah, which one? Which one? Fucking, <laughs> fucking are you? Chip choose, Tate. Pasta, pasta, pasta Tate is my TikTok account. Chip Tate is who I am. Okay. So, <laughs> no, you guys stop laughing. Uh, serious <laughs> business. Serious <laughs> business, right? Here. Me and right. Andrew are talking business, so if you guys okay, want to... So no, 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 we're going to keep talking. How long we got on this podcast? Man, as long as, as, long man, as we're here want. for as long yeah, you as you fucking yeah. want. Yeah. So if, you time, if you got time, jacket. let's go. <laughs> I'm pouring up another drink for 100%. this one. 100%. It's 10... By the way, guys, can I just let you know? It's fucking 10... It was 10 a.m. It's 11 oh, I got a now, yeah. I got a call of Kyle at 9, 10 a.m. He goes... He calls me, he goes... Uh, yeah... Uh, we're hanging like, out our uh, I'm, 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 I'm hungover from a gender reveal party from a good friend of mine. Nice. I'm hungover. It's 9.20. Boy yeah, or girl? Call. He goes, Boy or girl? Girl. 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 Unlu unlucky, bro. <laughs> 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 that is hey look it's tough man because like, when she yeah. put, when she starts doing OnlyFans it's it a wrap. done out but it's I get, it, I get this call Carl goes to me he goes yeah uh, Andrew Tate's gonna be at the office one hour early I, I looked at myself I said this man 6am minus one minute sleep that's what he does I'm not surprised I was, I was, I was there like are you fucking I was, right. I was pissed you know, I'm gonna say, time, you know what you I'm, actually, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna say something I probably shouldn't say on this fucking podcast it's okay say what you can free speech say what you want <laughs> alright so last night right Ah, oh, fucking. Can I say this? Free thing? speech. Oh, you can cut it. If you, you want to cut, cut, cut it, cut it afterwards. You want, yeah. You're an advocate. So last, all right. So speech. last night, right? So I'm in London. Because you guys say like I didn't sleep. I was drinking last night as well. So I, yeah. I have a hangover too. As you can there. tell, I'm not completely on form. Yeah. What did you go? <laughs> close, you, went, you went to club? No, well, that, that, that does not seem true. <laughs> no. Um, so I was out I was last night and I got a message on Instagram from some guy I used to know for a long time, et cetera, et cetera. He goes, hey, let's have a cigar. I said, okay, cool, let's have a cigar. We went, we met, we had a cigar. And he said, hey, man, I just want to show you some videos. And he showed me some videos of him with some very famous people. I won't say their names, some famous people. And he said, bro, you need to be careful. I was like, what? He goes, when I was hanging around with these people, I won't tell the story of how he knows them, blah, blah, blah. 
he was saying they had to sell their soul to a degree to get that level of influence. These are like some of those famous people. Yeah. He's saying that the people who are in charge of controlling the narrative don't like people who have a huge, huge influence who they don't control to some degree. And the internet's changed that, but still people who have a massive influence over populations and society, they want to control one way or another and you need to be very careful. And I was like, I kind of knew all this. All right, all right, yeah. Jay, don't worry about it. He goes, no, but you've blown up big. Don't worry about it. And I was like, all right, cool. And then about four hours after this conversation, maybe about 2 a.m. last night, I got a message on my WhatsApp saying, hey, my name is XX. I'm friend of this guy. This is where I got your number. We want to invite you to a private party. There's a private island we want to invite you to. Not a private island, bro. We can't be doing these islands no more, man. It can't be an Epstein island, bro. We can't. We can't uh, if we that. find out you're up to... I'm telling you now on the podcast to show everyone I'm not fucking doing it, but if I get right. smoked, you know why. Yeah, yeah. All right, cool. Okay, cool. we got you, we got you. So if I get smoked, take these fuckers with me. <laughs> no, nah, fuck that. It's for their views. <laughs> oh, fuck that. It's for their views. <laughs> Um, oh yeah, well, uh, you gonna let your chip take? You gonna let your own son? You gonna let your own son go out? We like die together. <laughs> oh no! You know what? I'll ride or die, man. I'm happy. All right, you. Right, cool. <laughs> Leave me the fuck out of this, please. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. they were just like, "Look, it's it's it, you know, there's 500 people, 400 girls, 100 guys. It's private, it's invite only. It's in July." Blah, blah. And I was like, "This is weird." And, and, and then I'm thinking, well, maybe yeah, I do have quite a lot of influence, et cetera. Maybe people would like some leverage over me. Maybe they would like, you know, a, ho a video of me in a hotel room with, even if it's just chicks, even if it's just something normal, but they get the video and they fucking flip it. And, uh, there, there are things that come with fame that start making you be careful, especially with me as well, because I'm a, seen as a bad guy. I'm a bad man, right? So I have to be very, very careful who I interact with. Like I have no new friends. I talk to the same people I spoke to when I was broke. I have no new friends. I don't hire no new people. I've been invited by some very, very, some of the most, I could tell you names you wouldn't believe it. The most famous people on the planet have DM'd me saying, hey, come to my party. I'm like, no. Fuck wow. You. I'm staying away from all of it, right? Because I want to try and stay outside the matrix. I think there's a level to the matrix. Once you get caught in, you're, you're fucked again. So I'm saying this on Spotify. So I would never kill myself. First. Uh, do you own your own jet or is that a plan at some point? Like I don't own anything. Well, of course. I don't own anything. I don't own any of the cars I drive. I don't own the house I live in. I don't own any wow. of the boats I'm on. I don't own any of the planes what, I fly. The shell I don't own company anything. in the Caribbean. I own nothing, governments. <laughs> Does I own nothing company. you can come for me. <laughs> I don't own anything. Know. I'm poor. I'm bankrupt. <laughs> I've got a terrible industry. credit rating. Bro, we're going to O2 right now. They won't even give me a fucking contract. I ain't got nothing. <laughs> I'm a bro. I'm brokey. You're a brokey. I'm going to announce right now. I'm a brokey. I just have access to a whole bunch of rich people shit and a whole bunch of money. That's all it is, wow. but I'm still a brokey on paper, my friend. No, I ain't got right. nothing, HMRC. No. Well, you, uh, you yeah. recently acquired, or uh, how recent was the Bugatti? Because th that made the rounds, at least on TikTok yeah, anyways. Yeah, yeah. December, when did you get December, that? January, something like that. And how's that, is, is that something that you always like, looked up to and you were like, I, this, is, this is a milestone, or like a milestone, or just like a, a goal of mine is to own an, an exclusive car what five million dollars is nothing chump change no but the story of no, how the, you bought no, no, no. it how the, the, did you, the shell company yeah. has the, because it's not so easy to just buy a baguette no it's not it's not easy to get it and uh the, the story is that i was driving i just bought a brand new ferrari in 812 super fast in london i was driving home to romania and i stopped in munich germany and there was a bugatti store and i went to go in there and because everyone goes in there and fucks about and pretends they want to buy one they wouldn't let me in they're like no appointment only it's like listen yeah. i'm rich don't treat me like a chump and they're like, no, no, appointment only. And the, the, the girl was giving me a bunch of shit. So then I had to email someone to email someone. I just spoke to an important friend inside my network in the war room. And he emailed the regional director of Bugatti sales. And he called me up and he's like, look, we have a lot of people come in the showroom and talk shit. Are you full of shit? It's like, bro, I'll buy one right now. So once I said that, I had to buy one, didn't I? So yeah, <laughs> that was it. We actually, so I know, guess the woman's sales tactic of not letting me in the store worked like, pretty good. So um, that's an actual thing, by the way, you know, they do that in like these, these expensive places. They treat you as if you can't afford it. And then, so what, so, so naturally the fuck yeah. up, human yeah. instinct is to be like, fuck you yeah. and go and buy it. I get that at Primark. The they, they give that to me at Primark. <laughs> they, what, at Primark? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's different, man. Yeah. Their sales tactics. Want some chinos, then <laughs> not having them. <laughs> not having 10 them. 10 quid exactly. boss. How the man in the nine to five escapes. I still don't answer the question. <laughs> yeah, drop it on us, please. As a professional, I refuse to leave people hanging. People are sitting here going, I need to quit working at Pizza Hut. Andrew, tell me how. Uh-huh. So we've talked about education and truly understanding. I could talk forever about property and all this stuff. Yeah. You have to understand that the system in and of itself is slavery. And you're all, you can just be a different level of slave. That's all you can be. Yep. Then you have to find a way to escape the system. The easiest way to escape the system is via network. You have to know people. The whole world is only people. I think a lot of... A lot of individuals forget that every single institution on earth, every single organization, every single business, et cetera, it's just people in a room. 
What's this podcast now? People in a room. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What's Tesla? Elon's business. People go to a factory, build something. What's a government? A bunch of people turn up to a building, decide to enslave everybody. It's people in a room. If you don't know any people, you're fucked. So I often say this to, 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 to people who come to me and say, look, I want to become free, et cetera, et cetera. I said, who's the most important person in your phone? Oh, well, um, and they scroll and then they go, well, this guy, yeah, he's a guy I went to school with. And he went to uni and now he's a regional manager of uh, this business and he has a Mercedes. That's your guy? <laughs> that's, that's bro, the, man. That's the guy? That's, that's bro ski right there. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, please. <laughs> he's the guy you're going to call if shit hits the fan? He's the guy who's going to get you a passport or a second name or a gun or a firearm or you break you out of prison Bro's in the Congo? regional manager That's your guy? Well regional <laughs> regional <laughs> manager of a fucking recruitment firm? That's who you know? You don't know anyone. So most people's network is fucking laughable. They don't know, any, they don't know anybody. Like, there's not a problem. If, if you were to come to me with any problem on earth, any problem anyone adds to my life, I go to my network and we fix it. And you've spoken about this network, and this network is something that you're trying to create yourself at the minute, right? Called the War Room. I have is a, that right? I have a network called the War Room, yeah. Right. And it's, it's an international. What is that? Imagine the Freemasons, but cooler. But so, cooler. Yeah. No, so like, it doesn't right. matter. Let's say your Facebook account gets banned. Yeah. You can email Facebook like a brokey, mm-hmm. yeah. or you can go to the war room and say, my Facebook account's been banned. Do you understand what I'm saying? Let's yeah. say your bank account gets blocked. Yeah. Let's say your passport's blocked. Yeah. Let's say you need a Lamborghini in Santorini on three hours notice. Yeah. Let's say, I can give you a million different examples. Sounds almost right? like an elite concierge service. But, it's more, it's, it's not, not just, no, it's not a concierge because there's, there's, no, there's no people in there who are specifically tasked with providing value it's a network of people who provide value in return in exchange for the value that others can provide so even if you right. have no money and no connections right now yeah. this is the thing about being broke which we're going to go into in a second which is actually the answer to the nine to five question there are millionaires in the world right now and billionaires inside of my network who always need people on the ground who are loyal trustworthy and hardworking. and those three things are hard to find i've had people join my network who have nothing brokies from Dar- darby Literally with nothing. Mm-hmm. But the only way they can provide value is with their time and with their honesty and with their hard work. And they do that. And before you know it, they're working for a multimillionaire and now they're on a yacht, right? So the biggest problem with, with life, so the biggest problem with, with life and the reason most people are broke, and this is the answer to the, the final answer to the question for the nine to five, the reason anyone is broke in the Western world today is because they are one of three things. They are either lazy, they are arrogant, or they are stupid. And if you're, if you're broke, you are one of those three things. I don't care what excuse you try and fucking give me. You're going to have to choose which one you are. Because if you're none of those three things, it's impossible to remain poor in the modern world, in the West. There is so much money. I'm going to rub it in for all the brokies quickly. There is so much fucking money in the world. I want you to, when you drive down a street, go to London, drive down a street. Every building's worth what? 20 million, 50 million, 100 million. If someone owns all this shit, right? That hotel's a billion dollar hotel. That fucking restaurant's worth 15 million. You can take a taxi ride and drive past a trillion fucking pounds. Who owns all that shit? People own all of this, right? There's so much money in the world. During COVID, when everyone's complaining that they went broke, I made so much fucking money. You would not believe the amount of money I made. The amount of money that's traveling around and floating around the planet is ridiculous. We're talking about inflation being out of control. It's because they're printing trillions and trillions and trillions of dollars. It has to go somewhere. Now, they try their very best to keep it amongst the elites, and they do that. But if you're anywhere near the elite, you get money, right? If there's a rainstorm, all you have to do is walk outside and get wet. The difference between me and everyone else is I know where the door is to walk outside. Everyone else is just fucking floundering around the room, looking on the floor for pennies like a jackass, right? (laughs) There's so much money. It's so easy to make money in the world today. It truly is. And the reason if you're going to be, if you're poor and you're remaining poor is because you're the lazy, arrogant, or stupid. So we'll talk about those three things. The first thing is lazy, which I've already discussed. I believe 99.9% of the people I've interacted with in my life are lazy. And when I say lazy, I, I, I mean it in the genuine term of the word. They're lazy. They think that they come up with bullshit like work life balance. And well, there's no point working if you don't enjoy yourself and all this other fucking shit. And they remain lazy. And the problem is, is that the world we live in is player versus player. If you go play Call of Duty, right? It's PVP. You want to live, you got to kill that guy. He's some fucking 14 year old in Singapore. He might, he loses one more game. Don't care. Sniped. Boom. See ya. (laughs) (laughs) Had a nice life. (laughs) Tangent. (laughs) You're gone. 
That's how it works. <laughs> player, ver <laughs> player versus player. This is the most knowledge I've ever heard being dropped on this podcast. Right? It's fucking nuts. I'm going to walk away you. from this fucking thing and we sat there in Uber oh, on the way bro home. Oh, got sniped and I'm and not going to. It's a no, harsh no, reality. reality. Tangent in Singapore is dumb. <laughs> He's finished. So, but it's player versus player, right? Yeah. Now, I would like to believe in a world where you don't have to wake up and think about the money, where you don't have to wake up and think about the bag. You don't have to wake up and think, how do I get paid? Where instead you could wake up and think, I want to enjoy my time. I want to spend time with my family, et cetera, et cetera. But the problem is it's player versus player. There are people like me. There are sharks in the ocean. If you want to stay a fish, you're going to fucking lose. There are people like me who wake up and think, fuck it. I want more. Don't give a shit. I already have everything I could ever think of. I already have enough money to buy everything I could ever dream of. I can't even think of anything on the planet I want. Don't care. I want more so I can take it from others. There are people like me that exist. And you have to compete against people like me. It's player versus player. So when I say lazy, my entire life is work. And when I say that, people think that's depressing. No, it's not. It's not depressing. I love it. Every single thing I do is work. When I go to the gym, it's so I'm in fantastic shape. So I can call everyone a brokey. And they don't want to come up to me on the street because I know I'll fuck them up. Work. When I come here and do a podcast and have a nice conversation with you gentlemen, work. I'm making money in between, work. When I'm it's work. So that when me and her go to the club, she behaves herself with all the other girlfriends around because she knows, big D. You understand? It's all work. Life is work. Existence is work. If I'm awake, I'm working. Every single thing I do is conscious. It's all done on purpose. Now we're going to finish this podcast. I don't know what you guys are going to do afterwards, but you could certainly film 10 podcasts in a row if you wanted to, but you won't because you're fucking lazy. That is the truth. You can be the biggest podcast in the world. You we, refuse because you want to. We're on that way. No, we're on that way. No, we're on that way. You're not allowed to go home. You have to go home. Only work. No. There's nothing else. You have to outcompete everybody. It's smart work. No. That's the work. Uh, no, no, no. We're going to get onto smart work in a yeah, second, yeah, yeah. my friend. Now, smart work. 10 podcasts in a row is, is a waste doable. of fucking time. No, no, it's not even not doable. Not it's doable. just not. It, 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 just putting out 10 fucking podcasts is stupid. You think, you think I won't film 10 we podcasts in a fucking row? That's an L. If you, if you film 10, that's an L for you. Because no, it's if, not. Because I, how are you, you going to talk about recent? Matter. You can delay them. It doesn't yeah, matter. But the content you talk about won't be relevant in 10 weeks time. When but you, you can talk out. about evergreen subjects, about the fact that the Matrix Nobody is here gives to enslave a shit us about all. Nobody, yes, no, no, not about that. But no, no one cares. What I'm saying is they want to hear about the latest and the greatest. I understand. My so point, we have to talk about that. My point, um, the point I'm trying to make is smart work or intelligent work is something that most people use to hide and disguise their laziness. And I'll tell you why. So I would never kill myself, firstly. There it is. And Damn. secondly... <laughs> It's kind of scary. It's kind of scary, man. So like there's, there's a lot going on in the world that you have to be, that I'm very conscious of. America's one of those countries where I, I walk through the world feeling pretty invincible. Yeah. And America's one of those countries where I don't feel invincible, so I don't like it. Yeah. I was in Miami four in the morning, right? I just had these two Russian chicks in this club, blah, 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 blah. So anyway, I finished these chicks in their apartment. I come down and I'm waiting for my Uber. So I'm outside the apartment in Miami and it's four in the morning. And this car rolls up. It must have been like a 1996 Toyota Ultima. Like some old bus up car. <laughs> rolls up. <laughs> and these two guys look at me and go, yo. I was like, what? Was, Is this number 88? I said, bro, I don't know. He goes, you don't know where you are. I said, bro, I don't know. Then he turns around and reaches to the back seat. <laughs> and it's like it was black that. in the middle of the night. And I was like, I'm fucked. Like, because in Romania, I carry, right? So instinctually, I went, I'm ain't, fucked. Ain't got a gun. Shit. There's nowhere, to, there's nowhere to hide here. There's nowhere to hide here. It's just an open fucking sidewalk. There's nothing but just me and bullets, right? Reaches to the back seat. And for a second, I don't believe in panic because I'm a professional. But I analyze the situation, right? I have no weapon. He's inside of a car. Fists ain't going to do much. I have nowhere to hide. I'm fucked, right? So he reaches to the back, turns back around. There's a pizza. <laughs> And I was like, oh, thank fuck. But, <laughs> oh, just went down. Yeah, a pizza. But, but why do I have to live in that world? Do you know, yeah, do you know what I mean? I like get, in America, yeah. you're like, you can just get smoked. I had a Rolex yeah. on. I'm wearing a suit. Yeah. Like it's. No, I mean, when we went to LA, uh, when we was in LA once, uh, we were driving through um, like the bad part of LA in like a nice SUV, uh, Chevrolet, but it was like, you know, it wasn't even yeah. nice, but yeah, it yeah. was in this part of LA. It was nice. Yeah. People coming over to the car spitting on it. 
Yeah. Saying, get the fuck out of this. Like, yeah. it was crazy. What? Yeah. hundred yeah. percent. It was fucking nuts. I had to roll yeah. up the windows and everything. I had to put my seat back so that they couldn't see me through the window. Yeah. Yeah. It was That's, that yeah. yeah it's, it's uh, America's a different level, right? Yeah. So America, you have to be very, very careful. I mean, I rolled security in London. I got security with me now. London's getting a bit dangerous as well, but even, but without a gun, as long, and I, I state this without arrogance, right? As long as there is a degree of intimacy in the conflict, I stand a chance. I'm a world level combatant, right? Mm. So even if you have a knife, if I hit you, you're fucked anyway. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? But with a gun across the street, that's a good point. tough to be it's a hard, guard with a fist. Hard. Yeah. I mean, I, I've got some Neo moves. Yeah. I've escaped yeah. the Matrix. I can dodge bullets. But <laughs> good, I don't want to do it too Andrew, often. That's a good point. It's very different for you because when you walk in the streets, you are what you said. You're a four times kick. Yeah. Kick, kickboxing world champion like it's, it's it's a lot different say we're walking the street we could be as rich as we want to be but we've not got the, it's true but but, but even now but even then have. and this is another point we'll get to there's a huge difference between fighting and violence they're different things mm -hmm. so uh, a lot of people say to me hey tate why do you wear all security and i say one for peace of mind because otherwise i'm on, my, on edge all the time i'm perspicacious right so the number one way you protect yourself is to be aware you have to see it coming doesn't matter who you are if you get sucker punched you get sucker punched you like if you get hit with a baseball bat, you didn't fucking see it. You're fucked. You're done. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So the first thing you're going to do is I'm always, you're, if I don't have security with me, I'm always looking over my shoulder. I'm always watching. I'm always paying attention to who walked in the bar. Where's this guy? I, I, if I sit in a restaurant, I will only sit in the corner where I can see the whole restaurant. I won't have my back to people. I won't do any of these things because I don't want them to sneak attack me. If you want to kill me, give me a chance. At least. <laughs> it's going to be somewhat of a fair fight here. It's going to be somewhat fair. <laughs> I, I refuse to die with some sucker punch bullshit. That right? would be so shit. Yeah. yeah. After all of this, yeah. you just die from a baseball bat Correct. to the back no. of the head. Correct. Uh. You're right. So that's the first thing about it. But the truth is about fighting and violence is they're very, very different things. I was a professional fighter and I still am capable as a fighter. If you, if any one man were to come up to me, even with a blade, I know I would disable him and I beat him. It's no problem. And I would Do you take, still train? And I would take his life. Yeah. Train, train. kickboxing. Yeah. But, but. But I think the people who truly understand the nature of the world aren't interested in fighting, they're interested in violence. So even for me, for example, let's say I had an enemy and that enemy was a professional fighter. I wouldn't engage him in a fight, I'd engage him in violence. 10 men, machetes, cool. Let's, let's, you show me your fighting. We're hitting with a car, run yeah. him over the truck. Fuck him, waiting for him to be on the pavement and just fucking hit him with an SUV, fuck him. Oh, you're a tough guy, all right, cool. There's a difference between fighting and violence. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. a lot of people go, oh, he can fight, he's tough. You ain't tough against 10 Dougal Blades. Have you had any life and death experiences where Absolutely. someone's... Absolutely. What's been the, what's been, what's been the yeah. craziest one? The one that you thought, fuck, I'm lucky to get away with this one. I have some stories which I don't want to tell, but I have, I have one story I can tell, which I've already told before, which yeah. is a bit more sanitized. But I, I'm covered in scars. Like I, have a scar on the, I have a scar on the top of my head here yeah. where I was hit. I, I have a knife mark here. You can see where my finger came off and then sew my finger back on. Lovely. I have a stab mark here. So I've, I've been through it. But um, yeah, the difference between fighting and violence is very, very different. We'll leave it at that. There's some things I don't want to say on Spotify because of the repercussions of what happened. But I, I, I do have a kind of story, which was probably one of the times I was most scared. I was arrested by Spetsnaz, Russian military. That's in, fucking wild. In, Jesus. In, in Transnistria. That was pretty scary. In where, sorry? Transnistria. That's not a real place. Oh, that sounds where, like a tube line. Like, yeah. I swear <laughs> to God. Like, trans, what, it, you, you where is everywhere. that? That's... Um, it, <sighs> It's where that Sharif um, football team that beat Real Madrid are from. What a spot, man. Yeah. Shout out to Sharif FC, does, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Spot, no. yeah that's some weird bald, knowledge. Bald, that bald, is. Bald, yeah. bald and Bankrupt did a video there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Have you seen that guy's channel? Have you seen I have, yeah, 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 it's yeah, a good he's, channel. He's good. Yeah, it's a good channel. Yeah, yeah. He's, he goes, he's all over the place. Yeah, he is. He's, he's all sick. Over the place. Yeah, he seems sick. So I was in Ukraine. I've told this story before, but I'll tell it. So I was in Ukraine. I've told this story before, but I'll tell it again. Let me give a full rendition. So I decided, my brother and I, had this genius idea. This is about seven, no, maybe five years ago. My brother thought that Eurovision Song Contest would be full of pussy. He said, Tate. That's an L, by the way. <laughs> every, every, I don't know. That, that, I don't know. Me and my brother, uh, me and my brother call each other Tate. Yeah. And we live in the same house and I was asleep. And I remember hearing him say, Tate. I was like, what? He goes, Eurovision's full of girls. That, that was the exact conversation. I was like, what are you? I was like, what? <laughs> And I walked out. I think it was in Israel or something. And there was a crowd. And it was full of girls screaming. He's like, Eurovision's full of girls. He goes, we need to go to Eurovision, get a table, get some champagne. This is not like all women, though. Well, no, it's, you know, it's gay. Know. It's gay people. I don't know. Is that I what don't... Eurovision is? Just like, it's, yeah, it's, all it's women gay, gay people. people. It's, yeah. it's, it's LGBTQ. So, so Tristan was like, let's go to Eurovision. Is yeah, that what he was saying? Yeah, exactly. You know, Tristan. <clears throat> but um, yeah, he was like, <laughs> he's like, we're going to get a table. We're going to do 100 bottles of champs. We're going to fucking, we're going to run it. I was like, whatever, DG. Don't worry about it. 
And then like six months later, we found out the following Eurovision was in Kiev. And we spent a lot of time in Ukraine because we have, we have a lot of guns in Ukraine where we used to probably belong to the fucking Russians now. We had a house in Ukraine and we had a bunch of firearms there, etc. cetera. So um, he's like, Kiev's already full of girls. Now the Eurovision on top, be off the chain. We've got to go to Kiev. I was like, all right, cool. So uh, I was like, whatever. It's an adventure, right? So we got in the car. We live in Bucharest, Romania. We got in the car and we decided to drive there. We drove to the border of Romania, got to Moldova, and the Moldovans wouldn't let us through. They said that we were missing a piece of paper for our car and they wouldn't let us through. And R Romania, even though it's EU, has a hard border for cars. You need to actually go to the border and chat shit and get through. Yeah. So they wouldn't let us through. So we left the car in a train station. This is all on the internet somewhere. I've got a really old YouTube series called Hateful Tate. Really old. It's all on there. Yeah. So we left the car in a, in, a, in a train station, got a taxi to Chisinau, Moldova, which is another place I actually got jumped. Different story. Um, and... Uh, got the train overnight from Chisinau, Moldova to Kiev. Now, on this train, I found out later that because there's no airports involved to get in and out of Ukraine, there's a lot of bad guys that take this train. Right. So it was about three in the morning when I went to the food cart. And I went to the food cart and I sat down and there's these two big guys, 110 kilo, 120 kilo, big guys, bald units. heads, like mafia guys, units, right? Sitting over there. And I'm sitting there and I sit in the food cart and I said to the guy, food, he doesn't speak any English. I was like, bro, just. It's a bit of fucking strand, you fucking mate. Give me, Give me some lunch. Yeah. 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 Bro, I'm in the food cart. You've yeah. been in the food cart for 60 years. Why do people come to the food cart? Like, does, do we need a language? Give me some food. It's a fucking dumbass. So anyways, I'm like, give me some food. So he brings me some soup, whatever. I'm sitting there. The two big guys get up and they walk over to me. And one of them sits here. So I'm now trapped. I can't move. And the other one sits opposite me. And I realized I still have my Rolex on. I'm like, I deflated, right? I got my Rolex on. So I'm like, okay. I've been around the world, right? And I, I, I know the world. I know how it functions. So I'm sitting here going, okay, worst case, I give up my Rolex. I survive. Who gives a shit, right? So the guy sits up to me and goes, where are you from? I said, uh, I live in Romania. I didn't say I was American. I didn't say I was English. So I live in Romania. You're Romanian. I said, no, I live there. I live there. He was used to, and he talks to me in Romanian. I don't speak Romanian, of course. So yeah. I was like, I understand, but I don't speak. Blah, blah, blah. Why you're on this train? Da, 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 start talking to me. Anyway, he gets a bottle of vodka and starts pouring shots. You drink, you drink. I was like, oh, okay, fine. Have one, have two, have three. And they're drinking. You know, like Russians. Like, yeah. bam, bam, yeah, yeah, bam, yeah, just bam. Relentless, bam. relentless. And I'm like, okay, he just wants to fuck me up on booze. And that's my last skill gone. So yeah. it got to a point where I was like, look, bruv, no more. I'm not drinking anymore. Can't drink anymore. I'm not Russian. Try to make a joke of it. I'm not Russian. I'm not Russian. He goes, oh, Okay. Uh, why you're on my train? I said, it's your train? Why is it your train? He goes, oh, this is all mine. Then he'll start talking some shit. I said, yeah. all right, cool. And then he took my hand to shake my hand. He goes, oh, this is all mine. Did it like this. He took my hand and he went and he looked at my watch like this. Oh, that's, and then looked that's at, a long day. And then looked at me. That is a long you don't want day. that. And I was like, that's not good. Fuck. <laughs> that's not good. So I'm sitting there and I'm like, I said, are you going to take my watch? Was this guy bigger than you, by the way? Yeah. So yeah. I'm like, I'm like 95. He's yeah, he's at I'm, 120. Right? Yeah, yeah, I'm like 95 kilo. He's yeah. fat, but he's big. Yeah. Right? Just a big guy. Big guy. And, but that's not even about it. The truth is about, like, we're talking about fighting and violence. They're different things, right? I'm a world level kickboxer, but I'm sitting down. There's a 110 yeah. kilo here guy next to me. I'm pinned against a wall. Yeah. This guy here. Is that watch is gone guy. if it wants like, to be like, gone. What the fuck am I going to yeah. do? They might have blades on them. Yeah. What the fuck are you going to do? Right? Yeah. You're going to die. It's stupid to really try and fight. So I said to him, are you going to take my watch? And he kind of looked at me and go, why do you think you think I'm a thief? Da, da, da. And I said, no, I've just been around the world. I understand how the world works. And he, and he asked me then, he said, what's your job? I said, I'm a fighter. I'm a kickboxer. He said, oh, you're a kickboxer for who? And I told him the organizations I fought for, et cetera. I definitely didn't scare him. He wasn't scared of me kickboxing, but I think he respected me. Right. And, and, and what's funny about the world is that when you're a fighter, you get a lot of respect from people. You don't get so, you get fear from some people, but I actually think respect will save you from more trouble than fear ever will. And I think he respected me. He was like, ah, oh, this guy's brave. He's a fighter. And he respected me. And I think he changed his mind. And he said, okay, okay, okay. Have a nice time. And he goes, number 13. That was the carriage number me and my brother were in. So we already knew what carriage I was in. Yeah. So he said, bro. He eyed it up. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So he literally did this. I went to get up to leave. And when I went to the door to open the food carriage, it was locked. Oh, so it they had locked. Nice and, the, and now the old man goes, oh, and gets his ass up and comes over with the key. Oh, and gets his ass up and comes over with the key. I was like, why the fuck did you? And I said to him, you locked the door? Looks at me like, yeah. And what? And he's yeah. paying me, not you. Yeah. yeah. Fucking prick. Right? So anyway, so we got off in the, in the train in Kiev, went to Eurovision, fucking sucked. 
blue. Everything about it sucked. No girls. My brother's a liar. Sucked, right? Yeah. So I didn't want to take the train home. That's the whole reason I told the train story. The train is now mafia run. Don't take the train home. So your origin ends. There's no flights back because everything's been booked up for fucking months. I don't want to take the train home. So the only other way home is car, right? So I start going to taxis saying, can you take me to Romania? Don't give a fuck. I'll give you a, a two years wages. I'm rich. Yeah. Take me to Romania. Take me to Romania. At the time, Ukrainians needed a visa to get into EU, so they couldn't get into EU. Eventually, some guy goes, my, my cousin has visa for EU. He will drive you. It's like, cool. I'll give him 2,000 American, which is like five months wages. He comes. He goes, he's a rally driver. He's one of the best rally drivers in Ukraine. He's number one driver in Ukraine. All right, whatever. Cool. So anyway, he goes, we pick you up at seven here on this street corner. And I remember, because I don't know if it's like this anymore. It probably is, thanks to Putin. But back then, it was so cheap. I remember we were waiting for the guy. What, Ukraine? Ukraine, so yeah. cheap. I went out for a Champions League final. I couldn't believe it, bro. I paid less than a quid for a pint. It's crazy cheap. Mental. I went, yeah. I, we were waiting on the street corner to get picked up by this rally driver, right? We went into the store. We thought we'll drink on the way home, nothing else to do. We bought a bottle of vodka, two cartons of cherry juice, and yeah. two Snickers bars. It was like three euro. Yeah, it's including the vodka. Mate, mate, it's mate, you think it's cheap there? You get, get to Chernobyl. That's where it's fucking cheap. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, but just before the walk kicked off, I was in Chernobyl. Okay. And, and it is because yeah. uh, I went there to make a YouTube video. Yeah, yeah. And uh, do you it, have radiation poisoning? I, I, you know what? I, fucking I, hope I, so. That'd I, be a sick. Get, <laughs> that's a sick story. I had to get checked for the full thing. So when you go in and out of uh, Chernobyl, you have to have you have to go in this machine and you put your hands and your feet and everything and your body against this whole wall and then you push against it and it tells you if you can come out because if you if you go in there and you've got too much radiation on you, you ain't allowed yeah. to leave. Wow. Yeah. So if it fucking doesn't beep and say you're good, then you're stuck there, my wow, friend. Wow, you're done wow, out. That's, that's wow. it. You actually have to go ahead and live in, because there's a little town in there that still exists. Wow. Small, small town. You're living like, with a babushka. We're talking about 30 people in there. Wow. And if you don't beep on that machine, that's it. You go and live in there now. Wow. You work in Chernobyl that's now. That's it. You're fucked. done. I just went there for the video. So I went up when I was getting out and I was like, this is it. My two day trip's done. I come up to the machine. I go, well, I better fucking beep here. I'm stuck. He's like, yeah. hopefully you beep, my friend. <laughs> and I'm like, well, I fucking hope so because I need to go back to the country for my podcast. <laughs> uh, but yeah, Man. fortunately, I beeped and that's why I'm here with uh, yourself. If you, if you didn't tell. beep, you just message the war room. And we get well, you know what? My, that's the helicopter great, comes in, I, picks up. I, we'd fix yeah. it. Trust me, my friend, we'd fix Listen, it. Listen, when this podcast ends, I'll be right in your ear saying, you know what, Andrew, I've got a lot to offer to the war room. <laughs> yeah, yeah, perfect. Good, <laughs> good. I'll, I'll make a trade, no problem. <laughs> yeah, all right, let's do it. Listen, we'll I've got... Peru buy the war room. Off air, we'll talk about no, it. No, 100%. We'll talk I've about got it. Peruvian goat farm, if you're interested. Uh, I, I, hey, there's some very desperate men out there who need goats. Yeah, so, um, exactly. Sorry, continue your story. We, we don't yeah, need to we go into the Peruvian there. goat farm. Unless you want a Peruvian goat, goat my friend. Story, unless you he's want making one. an offer about a fucking Peruvian <laughs> goat farm. Listen, I'm a trade Peruvian goat farm. Take confidential channel. Yeah. Right. <laughs> but um, so long story short, this dude turns up. We have some booze. The guy is like fucking 14. I've never seen someone so young drive a car. Guy's literally a kid. I, I swear he must have been maybe actually genuinely 14. I was like, bro, can you drive? I'm a rally driver. I was like, you're not a fucking rally driver. What kind of lie is this? Why is everyone lying to me that you're a rally driver? You're like 14. I'm 18. I was like, bro, you're 14. Yeah. So anyway, he, he says he's the only one with a visa, right? So we get in the car. We start drinking. We're driving, 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 driving. Before this, I'd never heard of Transnistria in my life. Didn't know it was a place that existed. It's a breakaway micronation in, in Moldova. I looked this up afterwards. At the end of the USSR, they wanted to be more pro-Russian. Moldova wanted to be more pro-Romanian. They started some civil war, blah, blah, blah. 1992, nobody gives a shit. It's a breakaway micronation, right? So we're driving, and then me and Tristan by now are hammered because we've drunk like the whole bottle of vodka. Yeah. And I look out the window, and there's like blacked out, fully black, like Spetsnaz soldier. And I'm like, fuck. T, see that? And he's like, what? I'm like, who the fuck are these? He goes, no, border guards. So they don't look like normal border guards to me, bro. They look like bad boys. Special, yeah, special, special guys. Shit. Yeah. So anyway, we get to the fucking border, and uh, they come up to the car. And they go, duh, 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 start talking in Russian, drag the driver out. So they, drive, they drag him out the car and they close the door. So now me and Tristan are sitting in the car for about a good 10 seconds. The driver's missing. And we're like, the fuck is this? And Tristan's like, I don't know, maybe they didn't like the car. Blah, blah, blah. Then the two doors open, they grab us, pull out the car, right? So we're like, fuck. And when we get out the car, we see fully blacked out, black fucking helmets, black fucking yeah. ski mask, fully black, 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 ARs, black, like Spetsnaz guys, right? They drag us, take us into this little hut, little thing by the side of the road. And we're like, what the fuck is the problem? And they're like, who are you? Who are you? We're like, 
we're coming back to Romania from Ukraine. I'm like, why are you in U- Ukraine? And I said, not your Eurovision. Eurovision. <laughs> 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 you almost want to lie. You know the guy, the guy, the guy looks at me like he looks at me and goes, "This is either the worst cover story I ever heard, <laughs> yeah. or this guy is a fucking idiot." Because the worst yeah. thing is, I was wearing a black T-shirt and yeah. like some green jogging bottoms. He goes, "Why are you dressed like soldier?" I was like, I'm not dressed like a fucking soldier. I've got oh, jogging okay. bottoms and a T-shirt on. Bro. Yeah. But I guess I'm, I'm built, I'm military aged. I look like a fucking soldier, right? You got American, you, you do American have the soldier accent, look. You got the soldier a fucking look. American passport. Yeah. So he goes, I go, Eurovision? Kind of this. And he looked at me just with, with hatred. He was not happy with, with who I was and why I was there. Yeah. So um, they asked us a few more questions. We were sitting in the, in the border guards. They went, they took all our luggage, poured it all on the floor, just poured it all out in the dirt. And then there was 4,000 American there. And I was like, listen, bro. We live in Romania. You can Google us. We live in Romania. We just went to Eurovision. Went to Ukraine, etc. I didn't know Transnistria was a place. I'm not here to cause any problems. I just want to go home, please. Blah, blah, blah. He goes, you must pay fine. I was like, well, okay, what's the fine for? He goes, for impersonating soldier. Like, oh, oh, fucking I was like, oh, how much? He goes, 4,000 American. Oh, that's oh. how. Oh, 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 yeah. How convenient. How it's 4,000 <laughs> American in the fucking very suitcase. Very convenient. I was like, oh, that's very convenient. You can take exactly the money in my suitcase. Please yeah. take it, sir. All right. Yeah, thank you. All right. Sorry about that. I'll make sure I never wear green jogging bottoms again. Sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> Bundled us in a car and escorted us to the border and told us to fuck off and said never come back again. So that was in Transnistria. But that was, that was pretty scary because they had the Rottweilers as well on the chain. You know, like on the yeah. bark, trying to bite you and shit. And I was just sitting there. And you know what? When you're a fighter, something about you in every single situation, you analyze it for like combative ability. Like, w- would you I just, be able to get out I of be, this? Like Jason situation? Bourne. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, yeah, you're yeah, like, yeah, you're yeah, sitting yeah. there going, okay, this guy, I could take him. It's two outside, they're armed, dog there, that guy, sniper tower, that I'm fucked. Yeah. It's like, like, yeah. <laughs> like that moment that, of realization yeah. is actually no that getting out of this. Work. Work. It's, it's always an option. It's a movie. Like, yeah, you're like, that won't work. Yeah. That won't work. Well, if they, go, they had done so, it was like it was, it was yeah, a wrap. It was I'm, going, I'm going to Transnistrian jail. You know when right. when when you agreed to give when you're like yeah okay you take the four thousand. Yeah. Uh, and obviously, I feel like that's a fucking real lot of money to them. And they just uh, do they? They must did, be laughing. Would they? Would they? Like, oh, yeah, the buzzing? average wage is like hundred dollars a month or something. Yeah. 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 So, yeah but did they even show that? Was it like a norm to them and like, they took it or were they like very? No, no, they were probably very happy after I left. Yeah, yeah. but at the but time they, didn't show they it, kept uh, it. They kept no, it simple, yeah. kept it straight. Bro, poker face. Yeah, you know, you yeah. Know they, they had then, their game bro, straight. The bro. second you was gone down that road, by the way, you know they turned around <laughs> to the boys <laughs> like, yes! yeah, of course, they were laughing their asses yeah, off. Look at this the, jackass, Mr. Mr. Eurovision. Fuck him. I want to talk to you about Tristan. All right. So because obviously at the moment I've just seen a lot. Of t- I saw a TikTok last night actually okay. about. Um, actually, it was you. You broke one of the rules. Which I'm actually disappointed in you, by the way, Andrew. Okay. Um, <laughs> because this is our bank account. Oh, okay. Uh, so, that's that's yeah, part of the family obviously now. Obviously, you and Tristan share a bank account, which right. I'm now involved in. And yeah, um, correct, you yeah. broke the rule. Was it you can only spend a certain amount in one transaction? Unless it's been approved by the other person. Well, yeah. Is that actually like, how fucking real yeah. is that? Would you not prefer to have your own bank account? Like, to me, it just doesn't make Run sense. Run us through the whole thing, man. Yeah, how does that it. work? I want to hear it all. Do you have a brother? I, I have a sister. I am the brother. Okay. Yeah. All right. I don't understand how brothers are not as close as Tristan and I. I don't see why you'd have a brother if you're not that close. In fact, I do know why, and I'm about to say why, and it's going to piss a bunch of people off. I'll say why. But I think that brothers and the bond of brotherhood is something that's intrinsic to masculinity. And if you don't have a biological brother, then you find your brother. Like you just yeah. said, you found your brother. Yeah. Right? Oh, yeah. I don't have a biological one. So. And I'm not sharing oh, a fucking one. bank account with this boy. You better unfortunately, believe. Unfortunately, we'll I will say- we run dry. No, we won't. I, listen, I'll be spending it on business. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's exactly, on business. Yeah, yeah. And I think one of the best things about brotherhood is the accountability. The only person in the world who can come to me and say, Andrew, you're making a mistake, which never happens because I don't make mistakes, is Tristan. And the only person in the world who can come to him and say the same thing is me. And I think that accountability requires transparency. So I think that having a shared life to some degree with somebody who you trust to keep you in check is a fantastic thing. The reason, even though I travel the world permanently and I'm still in fantastic shape, which is difficult to do, by the way. I don't know if you've ever tried it. If you go to a new country every two days, yeah. it's actually very fucking hard to not yeah. eat shit and still find a gym and blah, blah, blah. The reason I do that and the way I do that is because my brother does the same thing. So if he, if he finds a place to do a thousand pushups, I feel like a coward if I don't do it. So now I must do it because he did it, right? So is it like healthy competition? Absolutely. I think if you live with people or you interact with people, you're in, you have a degree of accountability and healthy competition with, you're going to excel. I'll give an example. If you're in a room, let's say you moved into a house and there's five people who live in that house and the four bedrooms before you, they're all millionaires. Do you want to be a broke boy? 
aren't you going to try harder? Of course. Aren't you going to be like yeah. sitting there over dinner going, hey, man, so do you mind just it's give who me you five surround minutes? yourself with? Of course. Yeah. So everybody knows, everybody will accept. This is actually a miracle that people are still this stupid. It really is a miracle. It's probably the, se- the miracle number two to COVID because COVID proved really how dumb people are. But everybody accepts and agrees that you are the sum of the five people you spend the most time with. Everyone will say, yeah, that's true. Yeah. But then they won't curate who they spend their time with. Yeah. Then they'll go, yeah, that's true. So do you believe, so why do, do you do hang you believe around? in that? Completely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Completely. Because nobody wants to be the bitch, right? If you're in a group of five men, you want to compete. If you're in a group of five men, you want to compete. So Can those, you explain what that rule, because people might not have heard of it. It's, it's you are the average of the five people around you, right? Absolutely. You're, you're the average of the five people you spend the most time with. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. If you spend, if you walk into a room full of fucking ice cream experts and all they talk about is ice cream, right? They talk about how to store ice cream, how to make ice cream, the different flavors of ice cream, how to make money from ice cream, the best way to move ice cream, the best packaging for ice cream, et cetera. Over two or three years, don't you think you're going to end up knowing some things about ice cream? Yeah. All right. So if you didn't walk into a room full of people who are millionaires, do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's the same thing. You're going to learn how money moves, how it's made, how to hide it, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Right? So it's exactly the same thing. So everyone will sit there and go, yeah, I agree. You're the sum of the people you spend the most time with. And I say, okay. So why are you hanging around with fucking losers? Oh, but he's funny. So, he, so you, you being entertained with his shit jokes is worth you sacrificing your fucking future, the future of your bloodline? I don't, I don't talk to losers. I, I have a lot of people who, who know me and who I knew, especially before I was very successful, who were like, hey, bro, let's hang out. And I hang out with them and they, have, they, they just talk shit. Football, video game, bollocks. So, All I talk about is money. What the fuck else is there to talk about? I don't understand. I don't give a shit about Rihanna. I don't care. Oh, Amber Heard. Oh, she took a shit. Nice. Don't we all? I don't care. I want to get paid. That's all I'm interested in. So everyone I sit and talk to talks about the same thing. And everyone's like, oh, how do you make so much money? Because it's all I fucking talk about. It's all I think. Do you think you'll ever retire? No. 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 I feel like I couldn't picture you retiring that. From what I've spoke to you today, and I just can't see it. But don't you, don't, doesn't every man if they're honest with themselves, have a masculine urge for conquest. And before you answer me, I know I'm right, because even you guys, I know I'm right, because I'm always right. But even you gentlemen here, you esteemed gentlemen with your very professional podcast and your Thank nice you. setup here. This is the best podcast in the UK. And what are the, the number one podcast in the UK, by the way. You just nailed it. You just answered my question for me. You, you check your follower numbers. You check your subscriber accounts. You want to get bigger. You want to conquer the internet. Absolutely. You just said, we're number Absolutely. one. We're biggest. We want to be the best. This is the masculine urge for conquest. Mm. Now, there's different levels inside of every man, right? But the, na- the masculine urge for conquest is the reason for nearly every single war on the face of the planet. Why did ancient civilizations melt rocks, make metal, build a sword, then walk in random directions? They didn't have fucking Google Maps. I heard there's some people over there. Only 17 days walk away. If we walk, we can go fuck them up. All right, cool, cool. All right, let's go. So the get an army. Walk, yeah, build a boat. Yeah, get a boat, go over to another country and just <laughs> yeah, get there. And then and, and, then, and, and then you just kill everyone. Yeah, that's right. And because it's, it's, a natu- it's a natural urge to conquer. So for me, the only thing that keeps me alive, the only thing I enjoy is conquest. I have everything I could ever want. I have all the money in the world. I, money doesn't mean a fucking thing to me. What means a thing to me is just conquering. It's not about the money anymore. It's about the what, number What on is the conquering yeah. for you, though? Okay, so like, like you, you, you say this. conquering money isn't the thing, but surely money is the route to conquering. Check TikTok, my friend. I've, 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 I've checked out. Yeah. But, but, but what you're is conquering? No, 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 right. no, but what, what the, no, I'll I know answer. you said yeah. there's right. no end goal, but so, like, what no, is the. You're right. So, the path? so, yeah, you're right. So, physical conquest in and of itself in regards to walking and conquering a country is done, right? You can't do that anymore. Yeah. But you can conquer the world financially. Sure. You can, you can fiscally conquer the world. This is the reason why. People who have money like mine try and get more money. It's not to have more money to buy things. It's to buy people, to buy influence, to buy power. Every single government in the world is run by the money behind it. All the lobbying. Why do you think all these government, why do you think all these companies give money to the American government? Because they give a shit about politics? No, they want to control what's said, control what's done. Corporations run America. It's all about conquest. So when you look at someone like Elon Musk, Jeff Bezos, people like that, would you say they are uh, not necessarily- He's trying to conquer space. He's bored yeah. of Earth. It's yeah. all about conquest. So, He's trying to conquer Twitter. He wants to buy it so he can control narratives. I, and I hope he does because the narrative is controlled by people I like. I, I don't like anybody, but I dislike Elon less than I dislike the people who currently control right. Twitter, right? He wants to control people's thoughts. He wants to control people's mi- what they say. He wants to control Have space. you seen the Neuralink he stuff? Control, he wants to control people's minds. Yeah. What's that? Conquest. Right, this is how right. you conquer the Earth. Absolutely. So if you have a masculine drive to conquest, 
Besides making money, what else is it to do? Would you go to space? Because with your money, you could ease of it. What, you could it? do it. Mate, it's very, che- well, it's actually right. cheap uh, in, in comparison to your wealth. Pass me the cranberry, it's cheap. Bro. It's cheap to go to space for you. Would you go to space? <sighs> Bro, you know what? We I, always talk about this on the podcast. Me and Carl have done this a million times. I mean, Chip's a massive advocate I'm of space. Big, He's a, ready big, to go. Yeah, because I'm ready to get off this fucking planet, to be honest, my friend. <laughs> and, uh, and Andrew, I don't make this offer to many people, but I'll take you with me. Yeah, thank and, you, bro. Uh, I appreciate that. Because so, we're family. So we're family. When, I, when I match up to your net worth, we'll be out of this fucking shit all. No, no, I agree. And uh, we'll take over Mars. I just mixed Red Bull, Cranberry, and vodka. And I want Is that all, not the most disgusting thing you've ever tasted? I want tasted. you all to know. Yes, yeah, disgusting. Yeah. Um, so, <laughs> I, I did see you born. I don't. Why not just finish the fucking Red Bull vodka? It's a true alcoholic, if go. I've ever seen one, my friend. That's right. <laughs> um, no, I, I, I'm very good at. I, I, I exist where I belong. Yeah. You, when you know what you know who I laugh at the most. You, when you know what you know who I laugh at the most. People who get bit by sharks. <laughs> I laugh and laugh. Oh, you lost I your leg. Like oh, peg leg. Fuck you. What? Why are you? Why are you in the ocean? Bro got fucking bit by a shark. Why is that like the lowest? Listen, like, listen, he just caught a, a rogue Human, L. Humans, humans ain't from Earth though. I've, I've just, I've, I've come across this conspiracy. No, I'm theory. not drunk enough. Ju- this. No, listen, ah, listen. I come I'm in, listening. I, I came across this strong comp- conspiracy uh, yeah. recently, and uh, you know me. I'm a big fan of space. Big fan of yeah. alien. Uh, I've got an alien tied on my ankle that okay. says, "I believe." Because okay. um, it's embarrassing to me that we sit here on this planet. And you know, you talk about conquest and all this, taking yep. over the planet. The embarrassing thing is that we just sit there and think and we're, we're important. We're nothing. Your life, everything that you're building towards is, is not important, my friend. Insignificant. What, we're, we're insignificant to the greater picture. Yep. Aliens are out there. The bigger, the better. So where do we come travel. from then? We, this, uh, humans on this planet, they, they're not from Earth. We came from a different planet. I'm convinced that we destroyed the planet that we came from. So... But we mastered interstellar travel and we came to this planet. I agree. And then, and then you know what's going to happen? Let me drop another. Here's what's going to happen. We're going to do the exact same fucking thing. We're going to get to the point where Elon Musk, wow, he masters interstellar travel. We can leave. We can go to Mars, whatever. But this planet's dying. And guess what? We'll kill this planet. We'll fucking, we'll take any, fuck, we'll take everything from the yeah. soil. And it's gone. All fossil fuels are gone. This planet will die. And then we'll go to another planet. And we'll die there Do and then again. eventually go back to a really ancient, you know, we'll go back to a caveman style and it'll happen again. I'm telling you. What's the next planet we're going to then? Listen, I don't know that. Well, Elon Musk is the man to decide that or maybe terrific take. Are, are there girls in space? Or do I have to bring my <laughs> Listen, my friend. No, no, you got to bring your own. Oh, then I need a bigger, I need a, a bigger there's, space. There's alien yeah. women for you. All right, all right. Yeah. Otherwise, I need a bigger spaceship, more seats, you know. Blah, listen, blah. listen, you but, give me your net worth and we'll make something happen. Right. We can do this. No, the problem is with space and I know what you're saying, but. The point I was trying to make about sharks is that I don't really like to exist where I don't belong. When someone says to me, oh, I lost my leg in a shark attack, you kind of deserve that. You're in the shark's house. Yep. Like, if you walk in my house, I'll take more than your leg, you little pussy. I don't know you. I don't know you. Great white shark doesn't know you. He doesn't know your name. Mm-hmm. Fuck yeah. you. You're, you went into the shark's house to go paddle boarding, thought you were something, lost a limb. Welcome to the real world. Mm. Me and sharks have a really good deal. It's really interesting. I never fuck with sharks in their house. And a shark's never turned up to my house, ever. It's really? weird. It's crazy. <laughs> that well, is it's a... weird. You never well, had a shark turn up. Uh, never once. Shark to my core. Never once. <laughs> I, I, they've never come to my house. I, I don't know. It's weird. So I'm yeah. never in their space. They're never in mine. So you don't so go me, in the ocean? No, fuck no. So not even jet skiing? You're not even in... Bro. Swimming pools are nice, crystal clear. I can see in them. Because he was in there. I stay in five-star resorts, my friend. Yeah. Private. He's security. Got this, he Bro, did the same thing I ain't going I in do. the fucking o- ocean. No, sir. No. Are, you, are you scared of the ocean? No. Truthfully, I, listen, truthfully, no, it's not, are it's not, you? It's not about scared. It's that if a shark, I'm, 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 a, I'm a proud guy. If a shark bites me, I'm going to have to bite him back. <laughs> Bro, you're not you just hit him on no, the no, nose. Bite no, Andrew, no, Andrew, Andrew, you've, bite got, him. you've got what I got. I get laughed at this don't when I go on holiday. Me. You've got what I've got. If I can't see, if I can't see uh, what's below in the water, I don't go in the water. Correct. That's why. That's it. If yeah. I, if the water is dark, I won't go in. Yeah. Bro no. said he's gonna Bro, bite the shark. I've had, I've had no, this for years. Sir. I've had this for years. It's it called takes about ten shots to get me in the ocean. And you know what? I'm gonna actually talk about this quickly because I'm mixed race. Not many people know my ethnicity. They go, "Oh, you're look Brazilian or Spanish." My father was one of the best African American chess players in history so he was a he was a grandmaster of chess but my father my father's dad my grandfather is black and my grandmother is half black so that makes my father three quarters black one quarter white and my mother's white so i'm like a third black so i'm a little bit less than half right but i have one side of my family that's completely black and one side of my family is completely white and not to make stereotypes of any type 
But there are certainly activities in the world that are for white people and activities in the world that are for black people. And I asked my cousin, I said to him, bro, why do black people not like do extreme sports and shit? He's like, bro, being black is already extreme. Life's extreme. Like, I don't need to jump. Have you ever seen a black man parachuting? Do you see a black man swimming with sharks? Do you see a black lady? None of this shit. Oh, why so not? It's, it's true. It's true. So, like so, so, what are you saying? Life is extreme enough. Like, yeah, life's extreme yeah. enough out here on the streets. So like the black in me, I can't do it. When someone goes, hey, bro. When the white guy comes up to me, he goes, hey, dude. Hey, whitey. What do you want? Hey, dude. This is me, hey, by the way. This is me. I'm hey. saying, do you want to go scuba diving? Yeah, yeah. Hey, yeah. D- hey dude, bro. You want to go with the sharks, bro, dude? Yeah. We can go, we can go, dude, bro. We can go scuba diving. There ah! might, there might be a Kyle. shark, bro. This, this, this is, is me. Kyle. I'm like, what the this fuck? No. Kyle. Wait, so you're telling me you're not scared of 99% of things on this planet, but you're scared of going in water. The key, the key to life is to know your strengths and know your weaknesses. I am strong on land. Now, if it was me and a shark in the water, it'd be 50-50. I don't like that much. <laughs> Bro, I hate it to It would not be 50-50. Andrew, if you're in a war with a shark, listen, I know you're a four times kickboxing world champion, but I promise you, there's no your way it's 50 He bites me. He bites me. He bites me. I'm biting him back. There's I ain't having no it. Way. The shark would be the only shark with a, a bite bite wound <laughs> from Tate. <laughs> He'll be walking around Sharkland like, how'd you lose a limb? Fuck the Tate. Yo, don't fuck listen. with the fucking Dawn. Top I've got, G. I've got Top ba- striker. I've got don't fuck that, with him. That's Top family right striker. now. I've got to back him. I've got to back him. Right. I ain't having it. I ain't letting you bite me and get no away. He's like, a puss. I ain't no pussy. Yeah, but I you no see, pussy. that's why, that's why when you see white people in the ocean, I swear to God, some of us are friends with some of these sharks. Bro, Have you it, seen them? They'll, they'll stroke the shark. Yeah, just, I mean, you lost your fucking minds. The black in me will not do that. So I, I don't like no, going where I don't exist. Same thing with kind of space, right? I don't go in the ocean. Sharks don't fuck with me. I don't fuck with sharks. Like as much as I loved Steve Irwin, like as much as I loved Steve Irwin, he's a G, but like Stingray, like get the, what the fuck? You, that wouldn't have happened yeah. in the middle of Sydney downtown, bruv. It would have been fine in Melbourne. Why did you go in the fucking water? Why? I don't, uh, there's swimming pushing pools. the limits. There's swimming pools. You're pushing the limits. You have to know your place as an individual. But you push the limits as well. I do, but I push the limits where I have some kind of control. Like even against a tiger, right? Even against a tiger. Are you beating I, a tiger in a scrap? Oh, no, it'd be 50-50, <laughs> but... I got if I have 50, any, it's always 50 50 with you with the with the most aggressive animals. Shark, 50 50. Tiger, 50 50. Okay, no, if shark's 50 50, then tiger's like, like 60 40. <laughs> <laughs> to you, your way. To me. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. Bro, I'm a man. Bro, I'm a, it's a world of Andrew, men. Andrew, 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 how long are you here? Uh, well, no. So you're in England right now. So you're here for at least a couple of days? Yeah, a couple of days. Yeah, yeah we're going Stand for dinner. out for a week. Yeah, we're good. We're, we're, sure. going for di- we're going for dinner, Andrew. Let's do it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We're, we're family now. No, we're family. Yeah. Yeah, we're it's family. a family dinner. Andrew, it's a family Andrew. reunion. <laughs> Andrew, it's my first family dinner with you. I'll be paying. Oh, Don't you thank worry. Thank you. I appreciate that because, you know, money's low. Yeah, I appreciate that. Thank you. I, I got that vibe today. You know, yeah. You know, yeah. Like, I got the that jet vibe. Fuel, jet fuel's expensive. It is. It's gone exactly. up. Exactly. So let, let, me, let me at least compensate and get the dinner tonight. Thank you. Like insurance for the, for the cars. It's like would you, let me bring, would let you ever me, look into owning exotic pets? Do you own any exotic Ooh, pets? Oh, that's a good one. Because some, some, some of the wealthiest, well-respected people in the world own Mike Tyson. Mike Tyson, yeah. a fucking tiger. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I, I was saying, if people I could, we, if I could own an exotic animal. People we knew in Dubai, they owned the tigers and they have loads of crazy shit i would love to but the problem is i'm never home and i feel like it would see me as a stranger because yeah, okay. I'm, I'm home maybe three or four days a month i'm okay. never home. wow i'm never home so it would i'd literally be a stranger like i have my dogs i have five dogs and i actually give a lot of money romania has a lot of stray dogs and i rescue stray yeah. dogs so I, i've rescued maybe 100 dogs so far so i take them off the street i i bet, uh, give them the injections they need i microchip them i feed them until they find a home yeah. so i have a little charity so that so that so that's well, as far as that's, that's as, as far as know. the charity i yeah. did not know yeah. that yeah. so as i look a, after as dogs cuz dogs have pure hearts yeah, and, and even if they even if a dog attacks you it's with a pure heart mm. i've had dogs bite me right but even yeah. if it bites me it's with a pure heart it's not like with a malice intention it's just yeah, like it's out of defense yeah it's like so i get it so i respect mm. dogs i like dogs so i have i have five dogs myself i can't have any more cuz i keep fucking fighting yeah. But um, I love dogs, but they know me and dogs remember me. But I, I feel like a, a tiger wouldn't, I don't trust her to remember me. Yeah. Like I'm, I'm barely home, bro. Like my, my schedule, it's kind of crazy. I said at the beginning of this year, I said to Tristan, no matter how much money we make, no matter how many opportunities we have, no matter what the, op- the, uh, the, the party is or the motive, we're not leaving Romania. We're going to stay where we live. We live in our mansion. We drive our cars, have a nice life. And it just so far, so good. Doesn't work. It, yeah doesn't work out that way. I haven't, I've been home 
15, 16 days since the beginning of the year. I'm is, never is, home. Is, is, is there any part of you that feels like you need to relocate in terms of like your, your main your main base? Like if you're moving around that much, like do you even really have a place that you call home at the moment? No. I, I yeah. basically live out of a suitcase. I live in hotel rooms. Yeah. And um, is, is, is that how, how you actually want to live though? Like that, to me, that isn't appealing. I understand that. But there are, there are certain things you can do that make it a lot more tolerable. So right. the first thing is that private jets are basically time traveling. Yeah. Uh, because if you fly on a commercial jet, let's say you have to go from London to Romania, right? Let's say your flight's at midday. You get the airport at 9.30 or 10 a.m. You stand the line. So do you fly at 12. You land at 2 or 2. It's a full two or day three. gone. Yeah, yeah, an hour check to get, to get your bag. Then it's a full day gone. Whereas if I leave for Romania and come to England, if I say my jet's at 8, I get the airport at 7.59. Yeah. I go on the J8. I land at 8.30 or, or 9.30 UK time. And I'm, I'm in the car on the, M, on the M5 at 9.31. And you can go back that, that I go back in same a couple day. hours if you want. I yeah. go four countries in a day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So one thing is time travel. I call it time travel because it helps. Especially if you sleep on the plane. If you're like me and you barely sleep at all, I'm awake every country I go to and I sleep only when I travel. So it's like you don't fucking know this. That's the first thing that helps a lot. Second thing, if you have a good network everywhere you go, the war room helps me. I always have security wherever I go. I always have a basic shit, barber, yeah. blah, blah, all that kind of crap everywhere I go. Um, but yeah, the world's a big place. There's a lot of opportunity, a lot of places. And I need clones. I'm at a point now with my empire where I, I wish I had five Andrews, but only one Andrew exists. Well, you've got one right here, Chip Tate. That's right. And I'll be I'm here. sending you to Dubai, brother. Some gold. You brother, I'll, be, <laughs> I'll some... be by your side on that. Right. By the way, dinner tonight. Don't you forget about it. Right, so hey, 8, 8.30, well, if you, you better clear whatever you've got on your schedule. I don't, <laughs> care. I don't care who it is. I'll book it. We're there tonight. All right, dude. All right, I, I, I have a question. Obviously, now that you are you are more prominent on, on, on this online space, particularly with with a younger audience now, yep. um, and someone that we're close to is uh, is JJ KSI as well yep. as as following that whole fighting yep. uh, bonanza Ooh, around that. Yep. Um, and, and my question to you is: one, what do you th what do you think about these sort of exhibition fights and the entertainment they bring? And then also, how do you think you would fare in some of this stuff? Right. So I made a video that called out Jake Paul. It's, yeah. on my, it's on my YouTube channel. And I called him out when he insulted Conor McGregor. Genius, by the way. Thank you. Um, well, I was, I was saying Jake Paul's a genius. Genius, by the way. Thank you. Um, well, I was, I was saying Jake Paul's a genius. Oh, I feel yeah. like I he, mean, he, he is, in a way, to me, when I look at Jake Paul, I feel like what he does is very similar to you. The man is, he says what he wants, absolutely anything he wants, and people hate him for it, but people talk about him. He's monetized attention. Abs yeah. yeah, essentially, yeah. yeah. He's monetized attention, and I, when I made the video, I really disliked Jake Paul. Now, I don't dislike him. I understand him. I want to make something clear. I would still kick the living fuck out of Jake Paul. Mm -hmm. I'm not some washed-up UFC fighter. I'm not smaller than him. I would beat the living shit out of him, and if he wants to fight, I'll fight him any day of the week, and I'll fucking wreck him, and he knows that. Mm -hmm. However, I do understand what he's doing. I understand that he is very, very smart, even with his marketing angle. I'm just a YouTuber. You're not just a YouTuber. You're a full-grown man with the best coaches in the world who's dedicated his life to learning how to box for years. You know how to box. You're not a complete amateur. You know how to box very well. Three, four, five years of training combat sports. You can box. The guy's not a jackass. And the fact that he puts his spin on it is very, very smart. And he's also very, very smart when he attacks Dana White saying they underpay fighters to get the fighters on his side. Yeah. He's very, very clever. I'm not going dis to disregard what he's doing. I'd beat the shit out of the dude, and he knows that. And I don't think he'd risk taking an L against me. He'd rather take an L against a UFC legend or someone mm. he can. He can you know. Someone he knows he can beat. Would you? So, yeah, him? yeah. Or, or, but even even if he loses to let's say a UFC legend, he has an excuse, right? Yeah, because it's my fourth like, fight, it, he's a UFC yeah. legend. Da, da. But if it's a, if it's that's, a kickboxer, kickboxing is not mainstream. That's so, but, why. So that's why I think he's incredibly smart. Like he's taking he's a fight against Woodley, and it's like, oh look at Woodley. He's um he's one of UFC's you know yeah. biggest. And it wasn't. Yeah. It was um, known as but like a but but he's not he's not a boxer. He's a UFC fight. You know he's he's. You know, yeah, and he's old, and he's small. He's finished. Yeah. He's coming off the end of his career. But like well, you said, Andrew, him. oh, if I beat him, I look amazing. But yeah. if I lose, oh, he's a UFC yeah. legend. That's like, right. He's so smart. If, he's if, smart. if you put an offer on the table, would you fight him? I'd kick the living fuck out of Jake Paul. So you do it. I, I, I saw. I saw you made an offer recently on. T well, of course, tits are always. Uh, but I saw you made an offer to Jake Paul for three million. Was it three million? Three million. Three I million. mean, I, Jake Paul probably probably might be richer than me maybe i don't know i have 100 m i don't know how much he has i would I say think, i don't, I think, don't think he is richer than you if you've 100. got if that's what you've got i think jake okay, paul well, is close all right then jake but paul. i think you up the offer all right then jake paul well i make money in the real world i don't make money on just on the internet i have some real businesses i do some real things i make a lot of real money i offered him three million at the time i don't even think it's about money for him it's about credibility and fame yeah and i know that because he has enough money to not care about money same as me right so mm. it's not even just about the money it's about credibility and a fame 
And I think that him fighting me is a massive risk for him. He knows that. I'd love to kick the fuck out of the guy because I'd love to fight, right? And that's the difference between me and everyone else he's fought so far. I'm not some desperate guy who at the end of his career who needs a payday. Who needs the money, yeah. Yeah, right, right, no, right. no, I, I would genuinely dedicate my life and I would treat him like a professional and I would destroy him like I've destroyed all the professionals I've ever fought. But I understand what he's doing. He's a smart guy. I get it. And, and unfortunately, not, I changed that, not unfortunately, Fortunately, the world we live in today now is very, very much about attention. Monetizing attention is the way to get rich in general. Yeah. And it doesn't matter. He's taken his attention, turned it to boxing, but he could have done the same thing with race car driving, could have done the same thing with basketball, anything. Yeah. And the fact he chose fighting, which takes some genuine bravery, I actually respect. I actually respect he gets in the ring because it's not an easy thing to do. It's a scary thing to do, mm -hmm. and I respect the guy for that. And uh, I see him as someone who knows what he's doing and is a smart guy. I kick the fuck out of him, but yeah. I get it. I get what he's doing. I would love to see Esco. I would love to see you fight one of the like. I, the not, I would love to see a fight because I, I've watched your highlight whether, reels. Whether, whether it's Jake Paul, I'd like to see like a, a an event. I actually watched one of Jake your fights Paul. recently. Jake Paul. No, no, <laughs> no, 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 no. Go Andrew, on, Andrew, Andrew, Andrew. Can I get a reload? Do that again. Go for it. <laughs> and this is a TikTok waiting with a mil no, millions well, of views right I, here. I think. I think that. One of the biggest ways to, like you said, a, a gain that sort of attention, people want to see fighting, right? Mm. People want to see, uh, and that's why I feel like boxing almost lost this touch as well, is because it it lost the the ability to resonate with people like us. It was so polished, so clean, and all this. And that's why someone like Jake Paul, someone like even KSI stepping in, it almost seems like the guy next door is now jumping on a main stage. Yeah, yeah. And, it, and it provides that relatability. So, and that's exactly what's so happened here. So, yeah. And so this is... Uh, I don't want to say it's like the future of boxing because it's not. There will always be the best boxers fighting. The best boxers will always stay at the top. Yeah. But this is a massive, massive shift in the way combat sports should be looked at. And it is entertainment first. I agree with you. It's entertainment first. And also, like, when you have two of the best fighters in the world fighting, sometimes it's not that entertaining. No. Whereas when you have amateurs fighting, it's always entertaining. Yeah. And, um, yeah, from an entertainment perspective, I understand what he's doing. I think he's going to be around for a long time. I think he trains very, very hard. You think and if, he, if he loses once, though, it's done? I don't know. That's when we're going to see the test of who he is, right? I've had 87 yeah. fights, nine losses, and it's, it's hard to fight after a loss. Yeah. If he gets knocked out bad, bad. If he loses on points, whatever. But if he gets knocked out bad, it's going to be hard for him to get back in there. You ever been knocked out cold? Back in there. You ever been knocked out cold? I've been knocked out cold once. We yeah. actually... What was, that, what was that like? Like, what is... Only once in 87 fights, which is good for a career. <laughs> yeah. Um, I wouldn't say it hurts. You don't really remember much. It's yeah. much like a dream. Do you remember How being annoyed... Did it happen? No, you're furious afterwards. Really? Yeah, yeah of course you are. Yeah, we, yeah. Well, our, well, one of our best, our best, one of our best friends, Ali, actually got knocked out by Jake Paul. Wow. Yeah. yeah he so he was, uh, he thought we traveled all the way to Miami. <laughs> we was like, I was like, this is it. Gib has finally got to put an end to Jake Paul's uh, reign. Yeah. It's going to make him look like a fucking mug. Uh, he stepped in the ring. Credit to Ali now because he's a lot better. Uh, but he had this tactic where, uh, I don't know if you've seen this fight at all, it's, uh, it's called Anderson Gibb, and he, he just, um, what was it, the crab? Well, well, people called it the crab. Anyways, he, he, he just, he had a style that for some reason he just went, we'd never seen this before, and it was like, when the lights and the pressure was on, you did something completely different. Yeah, yeah. And, 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 and I'm sure that, that yeah. it happens to people. We've seen it happen, even in, at like top level stuff, it's like you go in with a game plan and... Yep. Well, 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 Andrew, what you were talking about there is what I was trying to reference anyway. Um, he fought, lost to Jake Paul, and it was, you know, it was humiliating for him, of course, because uh, he trained so hard. He got yeah. pretty bad. It was like, what yeah, was yeah, it, yeah. second round, first round? Something like that. It was easy for Jake Paul. Yeah. He came back the next fight, and he absolutely he fucking, fucking battered smoked. like this guy There's another TikTok TikToker. Yeah. A big one as well, Taylor Holder, and he absolutely fucking smoked him. Nice. And, what, and you know what's crazy? It gets even better because at the end of the fight, what was it? It was a draw. But it blatantly wasn't. It and was you know what? The whole the internet went fucking insane saying, there's no way. It's yeah. not a draw. And because they went so crazy, the actual, you know, what was it? Organization went back, checked it and said, you know what? No, Ali did win. Have you experienced yeah, much corruption in like that fighting? Yeah, there's corruption fighting. in the fight world, of course. Yeah. You got yeah. Triple G and Canelo when he beat him. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. There's corruption in the fight world, of course. Yeah. Look, there's corruption everywhere. Yeah. If government's corrupt, fight world's corrupt. You just want to be corrupt. able to play. Yeah, yeah. everything's Well, corrupt. whatever makes money, right? Yeah, it completely. And, th and this is what always amazes me when people say governments aren't corrupt. I said, look, if you could go outside and play basketball right now for 10,000 pounds, but you could, you could cheat, would you cheat? Be honest. For 10,000 pounds? Wait, well, if, uh, it depends I if I believed in, in my ability, would, though. Would I, I cheat let's say, for 10,000 okay, pounds no, yeah. in a basketball game? No, no, let's say us three could yeah. go out and play three professional NBA players okay. in basketball. Yeah. I'm cheating. Yeah. 
Yeah. For, no, for, wait, 10 wait, gra- wait. for 10 grand, 30 grand, 50 grand, whatever. But we can, we can affect the scoreboard. We can cheat and nobody will know. Yeah. Would you cheat? I, I'm it, cheating. It would, it would oh. have to, it, okay. Even if we don't cheat, even if we don't enemy. cheat, even if you don't cheat to win, would you cheat to at least make it like look, cheat, look, you don't look yeah. stupid? Of no, course. no. Here's here's what happened because people know that we're obviously not going to win. So I would cheat if it was a certain amount of money. Because if I'm stepping in there and you go to me, you go, Andrew. All right, look. Oh, it's got to be a life changing amount. And right. you go to me, Chip. Listen, we'll get ten grand. I'll be like, what? Like you know. So worth it. But my point is, if people will consider cheating on something so small, got you. Then you think they're not going to cheat on the biggest sure. fighting bat matches mm, in the world? Yeah. Who controls countries? Yeah. You think yeah. they're not going to cheat when it comes to who controls a government? So of you know when? Uh, so obviously boxing is renowned as like one of the most corrupt sports. Wherever yeah, there's ever. money, uh, wherever so there is money, who, there is corruption. So who is you think it? of football? All Top of level football. All of it. So who is it that? Uh, so like, let's say Canelo, and you got Triple G to doing a third one, right? Yeah. And we know that the uh, like yeah, he got yeah, beat yeah. off him and it yeah. was corrupt and he got the win who is it that pays the judges that uh to make canelo it's win gotta be the who's the one is it is it canelo's team is it the bookies who is it i think you're, you I, I think you're, you're looking at it wrong it's not so much about people paying it's about keeping interest in in certain organizations and certain things like mm-hmm. so if if canelo okay canelo just lost to bivol right but if canelo wins he's undefeated so his future fights will get a lot more pay-per-views cuz yeah. he's undefeated i was so surprised it's good for the sport one... as a whole so i don't think it's it's not as similar as look you lie and we'll give you x it's not yeah. about that every single person on earth to some degree is biased you me all of us we're biased mm-hmm. right and if you give any of us control or influence over anything our natural biases are going to influence it right yeah. so if you're a boxing judge and you know that boxing as a sport is dying yep. and you know that the only people who used to sell pay-per-views were floyd and now he's gone and now canelo and he only sells because he's undefeated and you care about boxing and you love boxing do you want canelo to stay undefeated it's not even yeah. about money. Yeah. No, I it's like, so do you know always, what I mean? It's about your yeah, natural yeah, yeah. bias. So, so in your now, mind. Na, na, now it's always doing. been taken away. He's now no yeah. longer undefeated. Correct. Is that like a point of where whoever's controlling this boxing world has gone, now's the time to make sure that Canelo is no longer undefeated? Is, it, does that, is that how it works? Is, that, is there something more to it or what? At Canelo's level, not so much. At, at lower levels, boxing and all fighting is a very dirty sport because mm-hmm. if you don't sell tickets or you don't, they're not interested. Yeah, they don't interested. Yeah, so yeah. I know a lot of guys who are very, very good fighters, but because they're very quiet people and they have no show business aspect, yeah, they can't sell no, tickets. Uh, listen, they can't get wa- fights. I don't yeah. want to watch a guy that is post fucking fight interview is him going. No, 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 um, no, no, no. Yeah, I really enjoyed the fight. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, yeah. No I one does. A, yeah. No one does. Right. So if you have a guy, if you have a guy with a big mouth, do you want to put your guy with a big mouth who sells tickets against a quiet guy who is really good but you know is going to smoke him and kill your no, cash No, never, 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 never. So it's all I, like that. So look at Conor McGregor, right?